Okay, guys, we are live! So for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I'll be your grim and perilous master for today, because today we are, I am thrilled to be kicking off our uh, latest ongoing campaign, uh, a campaign using Cubicle 7's outstanding uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition. Uh, and we are playing a campaign set in the Nordland city, the capital, in fact, of Salzen Moon, the city of salt and silver. And our campaign is tentatively called Salt, Silver, and Sin. And let me introduce you to the stars of our campaign. If you wanted to see these characters come together, we have two character creation sessions that we have previously posted. Uh, I don't have them in the playlist at the time of recording, but I'm gonna fix that uh, after the session. <laughs> Uh, but let me introduce you to the stars of this campaign. I'll go the order I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are and who you're playing. Uh, first up is Sean. Hey, I'm playing Thognoth Barrickson, a dwarf and an iron breaker. Um, he found his, uh, he was, he was a bit wayward and, um, went the military route. It's working for him. Um, he's a bit of a bruiser, uh, doesn't take a whole lot of guff. And uh, and was surprisingly sent off after finding like his spot. He thought like his where he should be. His uh, his commander, his mentor, sent him off into the world, which is which is um, puzzling. And yeah. um, so he's trying to figure out why. Thognos is, is uh, kind of what you'd call a high functioning sociopath. <laughs> so... <laughs> hey, hey, there's no need to. There's no need. Where's that book of grudges? Name goes in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, so I was going to bring up the book of grudges later, Kevin. Later. <laughs> awesome. Uh, next up is Carl. Hello, I'm Carl, and I'm playing Katarina of Shalia. She is an initiate of Shalia. She is a. Uh, like the second, third daughter of a wealthy merchant family somewhere further south from from Nordland and Salzamund. And uh, she is now on, I guess, pilgrimage assigned to a temple of Shalia, Shrine of Shalia in Salzamund. And uh, yeah, she's a bit large. She didn't really, you know, in the uh, sort of a debutante scene back in in Reichland, it didn't really work for her because she's uh, inordinately tall for a woman mm -hmm. in this day and age. She's like almost six feet, 5'11", uh, but she knows how to fight. She's pretty tough, so perfect for a, a priestess of, of the goddess of mercy. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm showing you mercy. <laughs> um, the She's from uh, Ubersreich, right? Yeah, Ubersreich. Right. Nice. Excellent. All right. And uh, next up is Colin, a.k.a. Spike Pit. Hello there. I will be playing Frederick Schuster. He is a middle child of nine. Comes from a large family of cobblers and shoemakers, repairers and associated trades. And he is a, by day, a hunter trapper. But his interest, which he got into through an interest of exploration and a love of the outdoors, He's a gatherer of lore and tales, and he fancies himself as a bit of a storyteller. So he he entertains folk evening time, uh, exchanges stories with any sort of interesting characters that he comes across. And I feel this is how he has kind of fallen in with this this band that we see before us now. Mm -hmm. So he's looking for a big break to get his family out of poverty and um, yeah that's his, his his motivation curiosity curiosity and the the, the big break mm -hmm. uh, those familiar with Salzenmund uh, may be uh, asking is he Frederick Schuster of the Salzenmund uh, Schusters uh, a very oh, yeah. extensive family uh, uh, of uh um, working class individuals, and yes, he is indeed uh, a scion of the uh, the Schusters of Salzenburg, uh, Salzenmund. They um, say you're never more than three foot away or a yard away from the Schuster. Schuster. Yep. <laughs> yep. Throw a stone, you'll hit a Schuster. Uh, then uh, next up is Darren. Uh, yeah, down here I'm playing Alwyn Carlson, who is a human outlaw from the rogue class. Um, the middle son of three um, from Middlehelm. 
uh, been sent out by his, a, his a father Middenheim. to prove Middleheim, sorry. Yeah. Mid Midden. Uh, Midden. Middenheim. Yeah. A bit of German there. <laughs> That's okay. Um, Third time lucky. So he's, uh, yeah, he's been sent out uh, to prove himself. He's uh, he's looking for allies to help him achieve his fame and fortune. And he tra travels with his uh, trusty family dog, Astrid. Nice. Large white dog. Excellent. Uh, no faster way to get this uh, grim and perilous master's heart than having a dog pet. Though... Our next uh, player may have some insight as to the longevity of dogs in our campaigns. Last, but certainly not least, is John. Hey everyone, I am John, and I'm playing Talthir of Manon. Um, he is uh, basically street rat orphan, got picked off the streets by the church because he got in trouble, um, and has turned into kind of like a black sheep initiate priest, and uh, still involved with some of his former contacts. But he's charming, cool-headed, and doesn't try to pick fights with people over what they choose to do. Nice. All right. So, guys, I thought what we would do... Uh, for those listening at home, one of the, uh, this is, like some of our other campaigns, this is intended to be a long-term game, uh, which is to say that we're going to be spending uh, quite a bit of time in uh, the old world. And uh, with that in mind, we're going to be taking our time to kind of get our footing in the world and uh, meet these heroes as sort of shit kicks off. So some of our other campaigns uh, move out of, uh, in, like right out of the gate as a, a bit more of a uh, breakneck pace. Uh, this one, we're going to see a slow build with it. Um, so in, in the event that... Uh, you're curious whether it's just going to be all chatty chatty. Don't worry. There's going to be green skins. There are few voices I enjoy doing more than uh, uh, Warhammer orcs. So, uh, let's see here. Much to the chagrin of the uh, English players we have, I yeah, imagine. Yeah, I want to see how, um, how you distinguish between orcs and goblins. To mm. raise your octaves a little more for the goblins. Yeah, the goblins are going to be closer to my like uh, than my gnome voice in uh, for D and D. <laughs> so, which is insufferable. <laughs> so, all right. So, guys, one of the neat things they have in uh, and they do this in a couple of the source books, but they give you a sense of what um, what uh, like an average day is like in Salzenmund. So, this what you see is Salzenmund. Um, I'll give you a handout with the map. I have a, a full page with the map on it too, but I'll give you a handout uh, with the actual map on it as well. I have a PDF version that I could load into the Why game. How do people get up to that castle? Uh, there are secret entrances. Look at, looking at the footings and the foundations of it, I think they'll be coming back down again soon once they go up there. Yeah, <laughs> tip over. It looks a little bit, looks a bit precarious to me, that castle. Yeah. yeah. So, this is... Uh, the map of Salzenmund, and we'll talk a little bit about that. We're we're not going to like do a full geographic spread for it. We'll learn the city as we go, um, the way any you know visitors might. What you can see in this illustration, though, clearly are a couple of really key points, um, and those include uh, the Chapel of Manon, the I can't remember what it's called, but the, the central um, keep, Castle Salzenmund. I don't know why I struggled to figure out what that was called. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, there is the University of Salzenmund in uh, view here. And there is the Temple of Ulrich right here. Uh, there is the Tower. Uh, is it the Tower Arcane? Was called Three, one. the Grand Orrery, right there, and the Silversmith's Guild House. It's right down here, I believe, and then that must be the Temple of Moor in here. The graveyards are. And the, let's see here, Chapter House of Sigmar is likely to be, likely easy, to be, to be easy to be seen. Oh, 
Just gonna yeah, perfect. Oh, it's actually not tucked in below where Manan is here. The Temple of Manan. Yeah, oh, it's right there. The, there it is. There, the hammer, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And yeah, the Temple of Shalia is somewhere tucked in there. Yeah, see, like, it's, I think around it's... Around here somewhere. That's what I was looking for, is to, to give us a... Yeah. So, like, the it's in, there's, like, a little island in between here somewhere. That's oh, probably, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. So there maybe is. this this area, or, or probably yeah, it must be like, in the shadows. Yeah, somewhere uh, tucked in behind here. Right. And then one of the things that's not clear on the map, but this, um, or at least it wasn't clear to me, and I, I couldn't figure out what they were talking about, about this great big lake. But if you take a look on the map, what is in the in this illustration yes. as the bottom left corner, this is the, the lake they're talking about. It's an enormously... Uh, deep and expansive lake. It just doesn't look like that in the illustration. But it's, everything's been like dredged, right? These are like kind of dredged islands, yeah. artificial. And yeah, then the so. lake itself, which is, uh, hold on here, because it's going to come up quite a bit with a reference to it. Mm -hmm. uh, as a uh, game master, I do have a proclivity of breaking stuff on the water. So uh, how can I resist a giant, you know, Loch Ness deep lake um drown the entire population in the lake and no one would ever know exactly the orange <laughs> deep the orange deep well and actually like there was uh, something that uh during one of the sort of major events of the city something uh, like a bunch of dead crawled out of the orange deep and uh, assaulted the city so yeah dangerous mm. so that this is the city and i and i gotta say like the, whoever i don't know who the artist is who did this but like i've not seen someone nail the art order as well as this did. I didn't actually look through where stuff is and, and what they look like. Like, this is fucking incredible. Um, this, guys, is your home, whether that is your place you were born uh, or the place that you have come to live. Yeah. In morning, as the sun rises over the Niesterberg, uh, the Count's heralds blow a long reveille from the towers of Castle Salzenmund. The trumpet blasts echo uh, from the hills and resound throughout the streets. The morning mist over the lake clears as the bells toll in the green bell tower to mark the day's beginning. From the belfry in the castle gatekeep, old Pete peals in response. Armored wagons roll slowly down the Reichsweg, uh, toward, sorry, Reichsweg towards the crimson bastion, accompanied by a troop of outriders and a mounted official in dark blue robes. This is a shipment of silver for trade elsewhere in the empire, overseen by a master of the worshipful guild of Nordland silversmiths. Children run alongside, whooping and cheering. Fishermen row their boats ashore across the surface of the Orms Deep, bringing in the morning catch. They head to Schutzmarket, to sell their wares. That is a morning in Salzenmund. And that is where we are gonna be finding our heroes. As, oh, there's one little bit of, um, uh, other bit of context I wanna offer you guys. And that is um, the timing of this. So uh, Carl will be probably the most familiar with this on account of running the Enemy Within, or yeah, Enemy Within? Yeah. Campaign, yeah, I think is what it's called. Um, this, the events of this, uh, source book uh, are, or the source book itself is set after the events of that mega adventure, and we're just going to go with that. I, I, th I had some th put some thought into like trying to rejig it to go back, and honestly, I don't give a fuck. Like it, it doesn't make a difference. I'm not going to run those adventures, so at least not in this campaign. So I don't care if that uh, has happened already. The most significant thing that happened during that though is that Nordland became a uh, a separate Grand Duchy. Uh, so it, it's a well, I think it's a Grand Duchy. Um, but in any event, it does have an elector count now. So it is a much more significant uh, political presence in the north, and it's very, very new. Uh, so what that means is, uh, as an elector count, the count of, uh, or the grand count of Grand Duchy, or whatever it's called, of uh, Sausenmund has a say in who becomes emperor. That is very much to the consternation of Middenheim and them because that was Nordland used to be part of their domain mm -hmm. 
what that means is there is not direct tension <clears throat> yet, but there may be some tension between the um, uh, those from Middenheim and uh, Nordlanders. Um, right now, the, the Emperor is powerful, but there's lots of Emperors who have been powerful at one point and have seen their fortunes fail. And when fortunes fail, that's when the Electric Counts tend to turn on one another. And given the extensive history that uh, Salzenmund has had as a thrall of uh, Middenheim, uh, it is probably likely that this would be a first, um, a first uh, target for disruption and for uh, taking over once again. So change is not something that is embraced happily in the empire, especially among the nobility. So. That is where our campaign starts, and we're going to be starting at the, um, while the time of our uh, recording, we are uh, coming to the end of summer, our time, we're going to kick off the summer um, with our heroes here. So this will be um, the first months of summer are lean months in Selzen Moon before the first harvest, and animals are fat enough for slaughter. Food stores run low, and the markets sell produce that is spoiled or at least past its best. Selzen Munders rely heavily on salted food and fish. So that's sort of where we find ourselves. And I think, I think that our adventure starts with. Katerina, you are making your way through the streets of Salzenmund early in the morning. Um, you had mentioned the Shalia's temple, and that you're right is right in here. Temple of Shalia is at seven, mm -hmm. right there, and the Salzenmund Hospice is right here. So it's not a long stroll, but you are making your way from the temple towards the hospice. One of the tasks that you have been assigned since coming to Salzenmund has been to uh, liaise with the uh, hospice. Now, the hospice is purportedly to be under the control of the, um, what do you call it? Uh, under the control of the uh, um, Church, uh, but the it's it's actually it's not priests who generally who staff it. There are actually physicians or physicers or mm -hmm. uh, apothecaries who who run that thing there. So you are making your way down. Um, you also have a a meeting uh, scheduled later this afternoon with um, Mother. Is it Mother Agatha? Agatha. Remember her name here. Let's see. Let's see. Where is that fetching young lady? There she is. Maya, Mother Agatha. You actually have a meeting with Mother Agatha uh, later this afternoon as well. Uh, so, uh, which is unusual. Uh, you, she is the head of the church, the Temple of Shalia in uh, Salzenmund. So you have met her when you first came in briefly, and you've been here for uh, a short period, maybe three months or so. You arrived in the early spring and have uh, really just settled yourself into uh, Salzenmund. The first thing you need to do is drop off the these uh, materials. The other thing you're thinking of is that there is a watering hole where you have come to call kind of your you know your home away from home away from home as it were and it is called get the name right here i think it's the shipwreck a fortuitous name for a tavern it is called shipwright's arms uh, it is a dive that is located down in around here. But it is a place where several of your friends uh, that you've made uh, since coming to Salzman went outside of the church where they have um, come to uh, to enjoy uh, your company. I'll put that in that uh, chat to the name of it. The ship writes arms. Yes, and we're going to talk about your involvement with the Shipwrights Arms too, uh, Talther, shortly. So, you were heading into the hospice, and mm -hmm. 
Um, you need to only kind of drop things off and, and check to see how things are doing. The contact you have there is a man named uh, Dr. I mean, I've got his name on the handout. Dr. Tanweb. Dr. Albrecht uh, Tanweb. And I'll show you what he looks like. Oh, sorry, Tan Vaben. Tan Vaben. There we go. Ben. That is what Dr. Tan Vaben looks like. He probably was attractive at one point. Um, he's not as old as he looks there, but even over the course of the couple of months that you've known him, um, he seems to be growing increasingly gaunt and more bald. Um, he just seems to be very hard. He takes his task more upon himself personally, I think, than what maybe other physicians do. Um, how do you think for a character like, for a, a, a person like that, I don't mean character like a I mean, personality, I guess, is what I'm using that for. Um, how do you think Katarina would feel about someone like that? Would she respect them for the work? Would she think that they're, you know, would she think nothing of it? Would she uh, find them a kindred soul, finding a task to, uh, you know, to, to, to dedicate their lives to? Or I, I don't know if she'd find them a kindred soul, but she'd be respect this person for their work. Right. Okay. So there is, um, you are able to let yourself into the hospice and you can hear the sounds, there's the moans of the ill, uh, both physically ill and mentally ill, because uh, it also sort of doubles as an asylum in here. And you, you're able to go in, you're just delivering some supplies uh, that have been collected by the Temple of Shalia, by the generous patrons of uh, Salzenmund. And you get in and you're kind of looking around. People are, are shuttling around. You know sort of what back room you need to go to to drop this stuff off. And as you are making your way back, um, you can see Dr. Uh, Tanfaben makes his way out of uh, one of the rooms and is seems to be talking to someone. And then he looks over and sees you and uh, nods. Sister Katarina. Her doctor. You, uh, I was expecting you. Is that is that more of the, more of the supplies? Yes, it is from the temple. And I, do you need any help? You look, well, you look haggard up late night. Um, he kind of gives a bit of a a weary smile and says, "It is." Your offer is appreciated, but we have the matters well in hand. Uh, it was a, a rough night. Mm. Um, there were several who were... They had the a fitful start to the morning. And I think this is something you have... Um, come to know what um what you've heard is that there's a curious malady or a curious manifestation that happens in Salzenmund mm -hmm. and it's not often and it's not always but sometimes people have these dreams and it's only those who have survived the impact of them that they've learned this from but some people will have they call them red dreams and the reason being is that people can sometimes awaken in a unrelenting and uh in what is it oh gosh i always struggle with this word indefatigable indefatigable fury they awaken and just go absolutely um, berserk, violent, uh, thoughtless, and just throw themselves at things. 
What he says is, um, and unfortunately, some of the inhabitants of the hospice are people who have suffered the red dreams, those who have survived, who haven't murdered someone or whatnot in their rage. It's again, it's a very rare occurrence, but it is something it is that has been with the city for, you know, generations. Visitors to it often uh, find this to be a, a curious manifestation, but you yet yourself have not had any uh, any such dream. But if you if it is what he suggests that it was uh, someone had a red dream last night, then it might explain some of the blood spatters on his smock. Hmm. If um, Oh, you could uh, give those to uh, Lotta. And okay. you kind of look and you realize there is someone standing behind you. Now, you are a tall woman, definitely. Mm -hmm. Lotta, let me show you the what she looks like. Lotta definitely comes from Norse stock. So she has, you know... Uh, big, uh, big bones upon which to, you know, build her frame. But she stands a staggering six foot five. Wow. This is what she looks like. And she has that same unnerving kind of look to her. And she seems to only speak to Dr. Tanweber. Tanweben. So you sort of like, and she's always doing this where like you, you to look around and she's lurking above you. And she has that same kind of like expressionless expression on her face as she locks eyes with you, those unnerving crystal eyes or crystal blue eyes. And mm -hmm. she simply takes the, the box from you. And she nods her head and then turns and walks off. Um, have you other? Oh, thank you again, uh, Katerina, for your assistance. Huh. Are you sure you don't need any help here? I, we will have matters well in hand, though I will, I will give your offer consideration. If there is something that we, you can assist with, we will let you know. Please extend my, uh, my thanks once again to Mother Agatha. Yes, yes. Assuredly. And as you, uh, are you just going to leave or are you going to linger or? Uh, I was supposed to meet uh, the guys at the bar or something. Yeah, you're going to head down to the um, uh, the uh, shipwright's arms. Uh, really, at any point, you know that some will be there. Tother is likely to be there quite early. Frederick and uh, uh, Thognoth are going to make their way down later. Alwyn is probably there as well with Tother, or around the same mm -hmm. time as Tother. Yeah, I'll linger a bit, like uh, awkwardly, and then when he doesn't acknowledge, he'll just kind of. Okay. And right, as you're I leaving, we'll talk to you later, Doctor. Okay, he uh, he waves and then he makes his way into another room. And as he opens the door to it, you can hear the screams of someone inside, mm -hmm. a patient. And then he closes the door behind and goes mm -hmm. about his uh, his work. Um, she's gonna, she's going to try to peek a look, see who it, it might be. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, sure. If you want, why don't you give us a? Let me see here. You know what, guys? This gives me an opportunity to use my game master uh -oh. screen. And you know what's on my game master screen? A full list of skills. Yes. Fucking nice. love it. I love this screen. I know. Okay. I keep looking at other screens and like, where is the skill list? No, oh. it's just, we played uh, Road Trader last night and I'm like, there's right. a lot of good stuff on the Road Trader uh, thing, but skill-based game. Give us that fucking list. I know. Like yeah. Star Wars, same thing. I'm like, where is the skill list? Yeah. <laughs> I just yell at a perception, awareness, whatever it's called. You know what? Uh, uh, Star Wars RPG has a full skill list on it. The oh. revised version. Because you know who wrote that? George. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like, too, that the uh, the Warhammer screen has them. It's compact. You know, I, you yeah. almost feel like they think it's got to take this huge section. And Warhammer does a good job of just sticking to the list. Like, you don't have to have an explanation. You don't have yeah. to write. It's yeah. just it's just the names and a few codes, and you're good. Yeah. Yep. 
I'm looking forward to the Imperium Maledictum. Well, both the book and oh, the, yeah. the Game Master yeah. screen coming out, because I'll bet you they're going to yeah, be yeah. equally good. Yeah. So um, why don't you give us a... Give us a stealth check, and we'll make that at... Um, mm, I think that's going to be... Uh, let's say average. Yeah, stealth is agility, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. I don't have... Okay, so just... So I don't have... It should, it should still have uh, stealth on there, though, isn't it? Under... So I, I think it populates it. all your basic skills at the basic rates. Yeah, um, it's not under there, but it's fine. It isn't? I'll just... yeah, stealth is like a, a header and the skills that go under it. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, so but you can give us... I'll, I'll just roll agility. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. And you said, what? what is it at? Uh, at easy, please. Oh, easy. And it gives you the... It prompts the, the names, not the numbers, right? Yeah, well, okay. it has the numbers and... And the names? Yeah. Great. Oh. Excellent. Okay. So you make your way forward. And oh, and just as a reminder too, make sure you guys you keep track of your talents that will grant you success level bonuses. Because remember, there are certain yeah. talents that will grant you uh, whatever rank you have in it. It'll add to your success level. The character sheet doesn't add that automatically. Um, so, all right. So you're able to sort of... Um, step forward enough to look in and you can see that there is a man who is strapped down onto a table who seems mm -hmm. to have um he looks like he is a you know he your average thousand wonder who would look like any other you know member of the empire strapped down big beard uh mm -hmm. and he looks like he has different pox kind of across his uh, his face and his body and he's just ah! Ah! and he's been fully strapped down to the table with mm -hmm. a big uh um, heavy leather strap, and then poof, the door kind of closes behind you. Okay. Well, she says a short, a small prayer to Shalia for him. Okay. She doesn't have any magic or anything yet, so. But, okay. You know. And so you're on your way out as you meet kind of the um, the main, you know, the big room where uh the staff would would greet uh, people coming in um and lock doors leading into other parts of the hospice and what you can uh you, you don't see it or hear it but you sense it that um uh lotta uh, mm -hmm. is just you kind of look back and lotta is once again standing behind the the area where they would be greeting people, and she's just watching you as you're leaving. I wave to her. No reaction whatsoever. Yeah, I, say, I do say lots of. I wish you had. I wish you had lived in Uberstrike. Then I would have maybe had a dance partner or two. Okay. And she's so tall. Yeah, she's still just almost like she's mute, and you know mm -hmm. she's not because you've heard her talk to Doctor. Um, yeah. Yeah. Before, but she just holds your eye contact okay doesn't respond to the joke this is probably not the first time that katarina has tried to you know yeah engage with her yeah yeah so but with that so you have a few hours to kill do you want to head down to the shipwright's arms um to have a pint and then go back and meet with uh lady agata or or mother agata or are you gonna sure. yeah i'm okay. sure they have a breakfast beer yeah <laughs> exactly. Our breakfast beer is just like our lunch beer. It's just like our dinner beer. <laughs> it's beer. So you, uh, we leave Katarina as she uh, leaves the hospice and begins heading to one of the bridges um, leading over one of the canals, uh, heading in the direction of the, um, I'm going to call it the sh uh, Shipwright's Arms. Now, I'm going to write down, uh, I see your question uh, for the Dawi neighborhood, but we'll, we'll deal with that kind of in, uh, in due course, uh, Sean. Uh, it was more rhetorical, but sure, okay. I'm in. <laughs> okay. So then, but however, um, our scene next opens, our next turns to the early morning streets. Um, we can tell that this is a certainly a less well-off part of town. And I think that this is perhaps uh, somewhere, hold on here. The neighborhood is called... The only, the, the book, uh, Cells and Moon book is fantastic and has a ton of great information in it. Lots of great like adventure ideas and stuff. The only thing that I think would have been a little help, more helpful is if they'd had uh, a single illustration that showed each of the neighborhoods. Because there's a lot of like, they don't necessarily show each district. 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Or is you have to sort of piece together what uh, each thing is. And it, you can do that with the information they provided. It's just that would have been handy. I am going to put that together before our next mm -hmm. session. Yeah, they did that for the Middenheim book, so I'm shocked. Oh, did they? What were the... Uh... Yeah, there's... Yeah, yeah, they would have like they have like a little inset map. I don't know if they have it. In, I have to look in South. Maybe look yeah, like they do. Like they have these little things, so you can like you can't tell. It's just that then there isn't an overall map like Salzenmund here, where it shows mm -hmm. just clearly where the neighborhoods are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I know what you mean now. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. Like in the Middenheim book, there's like a little little map on the side that tells you all the districts and the code for them. Yeah. But I didn't. I didn't see that in this one. No, it's not. Uber Shrike had that too. I think. Uh, Maybe just Salzamund's so small, you know, it is like the backwater. Yeah, and there's, I mean, in fairness, there's a ton of other stuff in here, so there's a lot of information crammed into it. It's a smaller book than Middenheim or uh, the Altdorf book as well, mm -hmm. so. Uh, well, Middenheim, you know, a quarter of it is, is taken up by Blood Bowl, you know, how to run a Blood yeah, Bowl game. And... exactly. All right. Okay, so that's it. It will be in there. I'm trying to remember where. Not in Easterberg. Pulls your market. Uh, Ah, here we go. So this is going to be in the northern part right over here. Uh, do I have my thing on? Right in here. This neighborhood here, the Temple of... Uh, Sigmar is... 24. I just can't quite make that out. Ah, so right around here. So this in here, this area around here, is uh, the Entwasserung. Uh, the name, the ward's name means drainage. More plots, hold on here. Let me make sure this is the right. Oh, you know what? I think I've got the wrong place. Because um, there is the chapter house and then there is the hammer temple. That is at 14, right. Okay, so over here. This is where the legendary Schuster family would be located. 14 is right here. A hammer temple is a smaller temple dedicated to Sigmar. Uh, the hammer of the empire. So it's in this area here is where we would find our stalwart dwarf stomping along through the streets. And Sean, why don't you tell us a little bit about what um, we would see as uh, Thalknoth is making his way towards the Schuster abode or the Schuster estate, if you will. Um, I think that... Um... He's taking it all in. He keeps a uh, he keeps a wary eye out. Um, he's pretty sure. He he still has a tendency to um, to think that uh, like anyone that brushes up against him does it on purpose, um, that kind of thing. And so, uh, you know, he'll he'll overlook probably the uh, females, but any males that give him a little too much of the you know what he sees is a little bit of the business. Yeah. Um, He'll he'll mark him down in his mind for give him a good shimmy on the way back. Yeah, um, this neighborhood is the kind of place where if you cut down the back alley, even a heavily armored knight might be seen as a potential source of scrap uh, and mm. salvage. Uh, so you might want to risk trying to take him down for the riches that would come from that. But one need only lock eyes for a second with uh, Thognoth Barrickson to realize that that would be a terrible fucking idea. So they quickly... He would, he, 
he would love that. So I mean, I think he's he would look. You know, he, he's kind of itching for something. Like he can't really, you know, swinging an axe in the middle of the town. He realizes is, uh, you know, obviously he's, you know, he's a military type. So he's even though he's got this wild hair in him, he's also got the discipline side. So he's not, he's not crazy. But if someone actually came at him, I mean, that'd be yeah. you know, it'd be an opportunity to swing the axe. I mean, that would be. Am I right in thinking that Thognoth would be, given that he was a um, a tunnel fighter for several years? Um, that he would be used to living a more regimented life, like you do this at this time, then you do this at this time, and then you're that's how you organize your day. Yeah, definitely. And he's a little concerned because before, you know, this this is more like before his military life, um, in a sense, because it's unregimented. So he's a little, you know, he's got he's he's there's a temptation. So you know, to uh, to get to get you know, and going to a tavern, unregimented, going to a tavern. Yeah. Hey, you know, he's not he's not ready to explore. Well, this is where I, but... I I think that he may be um, eager to impose some re- some order on his otherwise disordered existence here. Where you are headed is to enjoy breakfast with the Schusters. Uh, it, since you and Frederick have become such uh, erstwhile allies, you have grown used to. Uh, his mother. It's a different meal every day, and it's a different thing because it's whatever they manage to scrounge up to, to serve it. But there is that is the one moment where the Schuster family is all together. And as a, a quasi adopted member, they have brought you in on this uh, ritual. Um, so that is one thing you need to get done today is breakfast with the Schusters. And then the second thing you need to do is arrive and get a good uh, table at the Shipwright's Arms. So you have two tasks before you today, and I, I want to I, I, you to tell us like how how is he thinking of is this a, like well we'll do this when we are when we get to it or is it a matter of like this is treated as if it was part of his you know military life of like we're doing this here we're done our our meals by second bell and then we're heading off to you know to get to this place because if we get there afterwards we will not have the opportunity to get the seat. I think he picks his spots like I don't think he's going to mess with the Schuster. You know the Schuster ritual. Like he's not yeah. gonna, he's not gonna mess with, uh, you know, Mother Schuster at her own table. Yeah. Like he's got, you know, <laughs> he knows that, you know, at her table he realizes he's a guest. He's not. That's not. That's craziness. In a tavern, that's different. So I think that, you know, in a tavern, he's gonna probably assert himself a little more. Yeah. Um. And hopes and hope someone messes with him. Like that's the. Uh, yeah. In, the, in the tavern, it's it's wide open. Yeah, it's getting hotter too, so tempers are running shorter as the summer comes along. The food's a little more meager too. There's gonna be a lot of people in bad mood. There may is a there may be a very good chance of a tavern brawl today. No, uh, we can but hope. Okay. Yes. So um, yeah. that's the the uh, mindset we see as as Thognoth comes around the corner and makes her way towards the uh, Schuster abode. Um, Frederick, why don't you tell us what Frederick's mornings are like among the uh, Schuster clan? Yeah, I think uh, Frederick, he, he gets out before first light, d- does the rounds, go, goes to a few of his local haunts to see whether he's had any luck with his trap setting and his evening activities and his day-to-day job. And he likes to get that all wrapped up early so that he can get back for breakfast, as is the family tradition. Yeah. Um. And, and and he normally does that without too much difficulty, as long as he doesn't get distracted by something along the way. But of course, today is a very special day because Fognoff has agreed to come along, and and Frederick has been kind of pestering his family with all the tales of tunnel fighting and and sharing all oh, the. Oh, by, by this point, Fognoff has been a regular presence at the uh, the Schuster table. Oh, oh, he has. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we can right. assume that he's got uh, uh, he, that he has been uh, inculcated into the uh, Schuster rituals. Oh, okay. I misunderstood you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well then, it, it, he's eager in that case to hear of more because I reckon perhaps a pr- Frederick, being what he is, he'll, he'll prize out a few stories, although more towards the end of the day would be the traditional time for sitting and sharing of tales. If Fognoff's going to be turning up at breakfast, then that's just a, another opportunity to hear some more tales. Yeah. Um, so it, it'll be sort of like eagerly chatting amongst 
the rest of his siblings awaiting the arrival of Fognoff. And yep. uh, I reckon he always does a makes a show of being there at the do- being at the door to to greet him in and uh, give him the full five star guest treatment. Okay. So as so you are peering out, peering out of the dragging aside the bare Hessian yeah. straight over the window and, and peering and looking, sticking his head up. <laughs> so you're out there and everyone else is, you know, as is often the, you know, the case with uh, your family, people kind of have different tasks they need to do when they're getting things. As is the case with big families, you know, everyone sort of has their role they're doing as they're getting the, the table ready for everything. There's chatter kind of going on back and forth. Um, you you're once again have, uh, you know, um, done your mother proud because you brought back some you know uh some game of some kind to so fresh meat at the table always a treat for uh for them um but would you give us a let's see here um give us an intuition check please uh easy oh, hold on then. In, where would I find, be finding intuition? Intuition would be a skill, and if you do not have it, I believe it is uh... basic under entertain. Yeah. Oh, basic under entertain. And this will be easy. Plus forty. Entertain. How'd you roll the entertainment? Because I've got storytelling. Well, you're not rolling that. You're rolling uh, intuition. Oh, there it is. Got it. Okay. Any, the sheets are complex. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll get it though. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're really well automated. Uh, so it should prompt you for a modifier, and, and just set it at easy. Input value. Is that the prompt you mean? The input value? Uh, I think so. I don't. Don't know. So, there we go. Thing. Nine. Wow. Look at that. Uh, okay. So that actually should have been at easy though. Uh, so that should have been plus forty as well. But that's okay. That means your degree of success would be six. All oh, right. Uh, yeah. So you're looking and. So not necessarily the youngest, how, like how young do you think your youngest uh, sibling is? Now I said I'm early 20s, so 21-ish, 21. Yeah. And I've got four siblings younger than that. So I feel like they're gonna be only, well, they could probably be nine or ten perhaps okay. so they're one of your younger not the youngest but the second youngest uh, uh br- um, brother conrad um conrad is uh 13 years old okay. and there's just so conrad um you're a go-getter and i think it seems like the schusters themselves they're very you know they're kind of go-getters uh, all themselves everyone's got the kind of drive and energy to kind of make what they can of, of themselves and for their family. Conrad's a little bit more of a troublemaker than what uh, you guys have been even at your age. Um, and what makes, you know, he's sort of the, you know, every family has that one where you can hear mom's voice call out that name in just a certain way of like, Conrad, go. that's Conrad in your family. Mm-hmm. But he seems off. He seems like he is, uh, he's still helping with stuff, but he seems a little distracted. And if he, let me make a little roll for Conrad. Let's see if he notices you kind of lingering. No, he's oblivious to you, which again is, he's not a bad kid, but he's definitely a lot more trouble than what uh, you were at that age. But he seems off this morning. 
Does um, would I say that? Is this how he acts when he's in some sort of trouble? No, definitely, because he's a uh, definitely not, because uh, he is a <laughs> outstanding liar. So when he does right. do something, he, he can look at you bald, like bald in the face, eating a stolen pastry and claim, I don't know what he's talking about. I certainly had nothing to do with that baker's shop. It's, it's unthinkable that I would be doing anything like that. And you may half believe him still. This is very off for, for Conrad. And he hasn't, and he has not been moaning about anything or is not. No, and there's no he's injuries. Like he's not on. limping or anything. Um, he just seems. Yeah, he seems a little off and or troubled. I guess might be uh, the, the issue. Yet you you're pondering that as you kind of hear um, one of your other siblings kind of squeal out, "He's here! He's here!" As a uh, Thognoth, you come stomping up towards the Schuster house. The door flies open and one of the uh, children comes running out to see you. And maybe is it possible I brought a little fish or something? You know, like I think I was probably brought up, um, you know, I, you know, he's a, he's, um, he's got a rough spot, especially like in taverns or grudges, but you know, he's a big family guy. Yep. And so, you know, he's got that touchstone, um, you know, the Schusters are a, a family and he appreciates that and he knows hospitality, yeah, you yeah. know, that, et cetera. So he brought a little fish, awesome. he brought a little, uh, salted, yeah. uh, fish cut drawn, dr you know, fresh from the orm Um, that's yeah. going to be welcome at the uh, breakfast table. Yep. And he, uh, and before, um, as he was approaching, I think he gave his typical like little look about any ne'er do wells near the abode, you know, just to give him a little, you know, yeah. make sure there's no um, nonsense. And yeah. then um, outside, and then uh, approaches, and when he sees, you know, when he sees any member of the Schuster family, he tries to, uh, he remembers to smile, like he's like, ah, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be, you know. <laughs> Um, he goes, ah, hmm. You know, he kind yeah. of, he did the habit. You know, he's okay, but it's not his practice to be yeah. all. Well, and you're so strong so too. Like it, the, the, you could walk through these kids at, at you know, and not uh, miss a, a, a step whatsoever. Um, so you make your way in, uh, you know, and there's the, the usual hoopla. You, you know, there's a place where you place your shields and, uh, you know, perhaps your weapons. Um, the kids are having to, you know, um, the dad is like, you stay away from those. Uh, as these are trying to like, you know, poke at your shield or poke at your, you know, things. You're going to hurt yourself with that. And um, there's the usual seat that is accommodating to a dwarf's frame that is set up for you as well. And uh, it looks like the, the spread has already started. Uh, Mother Schuster has already started laying out everything as well. Um, Thognoth, why don't you give us a intuition check as well, too? I think we'll make this one challenging. And you know, it's not prompting me for difficulty, which is probably why uh, Colin oh, didn't. Oh, okay, hold on, uh, let's see here. Do, is and, it, and it seems properly set up, so I'm not sure, because I checked that in let's the see. cog. Let's see, let's see. Take a look. I thought it it prompts me for SL bonus, but not difficulty. <clears throat> mm, that's interesting. Okay, yeah. let's go to the cog here. Roll options, query difficulty on, <clears throat> query additional modifiers <clears throat> on. Success. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, Try it yourself. See what you see. What yeah, you get. I'm just gonna take it for a spin here. SL bonus. Yeah. Now that is curious. Yeah, right? it's not prompted. Mine, mine gives it though. Oh really? That's weird. Yeah, because last night I tried it, you know, a couple times and it was yeah. working correctly. Here, I'm just gonna do this. Yeah, mine yeah. seems okay as well. I'm gonna turn the yeah, one, two. thing off, and then I'm gonna turn it back on again. When in doubt, oh, yeah, yeah. unplug the router, yeah. plug it back in. Let's right, just, right. Just see if this. I was even gonna close the sheet too. I don't know, closing the sheet or I don't know. Yeah, well, I, uh, I've done the the same here. Okay, got that off and on and then on. Okay, and then let's uh, give it a whirl again. Let's see if that makes a difference. Target bonus. That is showing up now. Oh, nice. Okay. Fucking weird. All as well. Game. Okay. All right. Uh, Colin, I'll do the same thing for yours, just to try and shake whatever gremlins are in there free. Come on, you freaking thing. Thank you. So go here. 
turn that off. Close the sheet. Uh, open the sheet. I swear, like some of these open, like early sessions of these campaigns, uh, it's you know half uh, half play and half tech demo. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Right. And right. here's how you fix the problems when you're playing with uh, this in your own uh, game. All right, so here we go. Um, let's try you once again here. Mr. Shoes, target bonus shows up now, Colin. So there you go. Uh. Fixed. All right. Yeah, you know, and interestingly, um, it's per person, I think, because it wasn't working still after you fixed it, Kevin, and I did what you did, and it's fixed for me. Oh, weird. That's weird, huh? It's per person, yeah. Uh, well, then, it, yeah, so you okay. may need to go. What I did, uh, Colin, to fix it is go to the cog, go to the part uh, on the <laughs> left where it says prompt for additional modifiers. There's a drop down menu where you can turn that off. I just turned it off, close the sheet, open the sheet, turn it back on, and then it prompted properly. So, Thognoth, sorry, was that your roll or is that what I rolled? The the one that's immediately. Uh, uh, above? That's what you rolled. Oh, that was so you. Go, go ahead and go give ahead. us a, int an intuition uh, roll at challenging, please. Challenging, all right. Oh, sorry, at average, not not challenging, average. Okay. Uh, intuition, Which is plus average. twenty. And each time I got to think about, no, I don't have any intuition uh, talents. That's going to take a while to remember talent. Uh, you know, SL. Yeah. Okay. Is, the the, the Sethel usually only matters when it comes to contested roles. So if you forget, it's not going to be the end uh, of the world with most, but. Yeah. So go ahead and give us your success. All right. So you're getting in now. How would uh, I'm going to guess that Thognoth, having been a bit of a troubled youth himself, uh, may have had a bit of a soft spot for old Conrad. Uh, do I have that right, Sean? Yeah. That's that seems. Uh, you know, he's he's on. He's got. He's. Um... Yeah. I think that you know this is one of those. He's got. He's, he's, he's got um, some pretty easy, simple buckets. And like one would be in his military regiment. Another one is the family structure. And so he's on best behavior. Um, you know, he's trying to remember to smile and to not be, you know, gruff and to not knock the kids over like he would, you know, at home. Yep. You, you know, even that is weird because at home he had, had no hesitation and, you know, barreling into someone, you know, it wasn't, wouldn't be a big deal. Whereas here he knows it's not really accepted. So um, he, he's on his he's on best behavior. And so yep. and, and this. Yeah, this kid uh, screwing around is probably a little bit. Yeah. Dear to his heart. I think that would be uh, reasonable. So you can see as well, too, that. Uh... When, you, when you're getting yourself settled in, everything else seems, you know, uh, the norm at the uh, Schuster uh, estate, but Conrad does seem off, more reserved and a little troubled. He hasn't even said hi to you, you know? He's here and he's sort of milling about. Um, and I think Frederick, uh, you rolled uh, maybe what you, you know, when, when you lock eyes with a thought down after he's uh, settled in, you can see that he was looking at Conrad as well and had mm -hmm. noticed the same thing. So what happens next, guys? Um, I'll probably sort of like just, just after that initial glance uh, from Fognoff, um, I'm sort of looking looking between Conrad and Fognoff. One just trying to ascertain maybe what what's going on and what Fognoff has seen. Because I, I reckon I'd be quite surprised that he's picked up on something, even though he's known us a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be thinking, no. Has he has he figured out what I've figured out? And I'll be quite. I'd be quite surprised. So I'm going to sit and just just sort of look at him and see what he does, whilst trying not to be obvious about it. You know, when you say his, do you mean he does? Do you mean Thognoff or do you mean Conrad? Yeah, Thognoff. I'm I'm just surprised yeah. that Thognoff has noticed, and then I'm. Um, now you guys can have, even though it's in the intrigued. midst of a small cramped place and there's lots of people milling around, it's the kind of thing where you can always find a, an opportunity to sit down and lean in and be like, and have a, a quick uh, chat. So, and you guys are the reason that Thognoth is here. Like he knows you best of, of everyone here. So, and I think, uh, so I think Thognoth would be, um, 
he sort of wants to be a little assertive, but he's in um, he's on best behavior. But seeing Frederick's glance, uh, you know, like like the Frederick's, it, you know, funny enough, Frederick uh, Thognos doing the same thing in the sense that he's looking for Frederick for for like a cue uh, on this because it's his family. But seeing that look from Frederick, um, he goes okay, and so he he, he leans over to Conrad and uh, gives him a gives him a friendly little shoulder and says um and says uh oh, you're in the you're let's see what would be the equivalent of doghouse in uh you think warhammer has being in the doghouse what would that be in yeah, the rat I house <laughs> in the, oh are you I in mean, the, the stockade or the um the what, what do they call um, them what, what are the stocks yeah yeah are, are you in the family stocks again conrad i'll uh i gotta work on my uh my Scottish accent, it's, but, uh, it's yeah. a work in, yeah, it's a work in progress. <laughs> yeah, are, are, you, are you in the are you in the family in the family stockade again? Yeah. So, what you both notice is when you shove him, um, he flinches in a way like he's trying to get away from something, and then he, he looks up at you and he's making a willpower. He's a tough kid, um, yeah, but he uh, he sort of um, when um, he. When he when he hits that, he does a, uh, he, he looks up at you and like, this is very unlike Conrad as well too. His eyes look like he's about to fucking cry. Like you, that that's really, that in and of itself startled him. There's absolutely no way that this kid normally acts this way. He's a rough and tumble, you know, uh, little troublemaker. So something is definitely off about him. And he, he kind of looks around at the family trying to, quickly collect himself and he's just nothing nothing and then sort of like rushes out the front door to and you know he's probably like lurking outside somewhere there's there's steps outside where you know mom and dad in the evening will sit um but he bursts out the door no one else seems to make a, a fuss of it because you know there's a lot of people around a lot of noise everyone else is kind of getting settled down for food but the two of you can definitely recognize for one how unusual this is and you can see the flinching I'll look. I'll look at Fognoff and uh, sort of raise my eyebrows and do, kind of gesticulate with my head towards the door, as if to say, yeah. Yeah, "I'll, I'll mumble. I'll stand and mumble some kind of uh, you know what he thinks is a human expected you know excuse me or whatever some ridiculousness and then um, and then I'll, I'll head off to the head off outside camp." Okay. So You've got the, dash, my, 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 um, I've seen you tomorrow, yeah. And I, mm, I, I yeah, yeah, but perhaps, uh, yeah. Perhaps, uh, well, you know, the meal has, has the meal we haven't eaten yet, right? Yeah, yeah no. Or, uh, Mother Schuster kind of looks. She's like, "You're not leaving, are you?" No, I'll be right back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just popping out. Just uh, I forgot something. I've got to check on. Uh, yeah. Don't well, worry, it, I'll be back in a minute. You know how it is. It's gonna get cold. I, I've uh, played. No, 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 no. Don't worry. Yeah, so the two of you are able to, to sort of extricate yourself from uh, um, from Mother Schuster, and you step outside, and you can see that um, Conrad is sitting sort of on the farthest end of the bench to the left, uh, outside the house, um, and he's got kind of his head in his uh, in his hands. His head is is down, um, almost like he's trying to shut things trying out. To shut things out. He's got his. Uh, he's got his. Uh, oh, I'm gonna mute you again, no. Colin. There we go. Uh, his hands over his eyes, um, and maybe even trying to cover his ears. I'll um. I'll I'll, I'll head straight over. Okay. Yeah, I'm inside. He can hear you. Uh, you know, coming from, and he kind of looks up, and sits up, and tries his best to sort of wipe away. You know, the, his nose is all red. You can see his eyes are uh, are pretty puffy and red and he's trying to wipe him away me tough kid now um i'll i'll glance at Fred frederick and then um i'll go straight in at it and i'll say all right, all right now uh uh i listen this is my uh, this is this is my best try at being sensitive out with it now i there's no point in just holding it in <laughs> Why don't you give us a... Let's see here. He's going to be great at this, I'm sure. Yeah, no doubt. Um, Some charm? Charm? 
Yeah, I think charm, charm or leadership. I, I think are. Oh yeah, I like the leadership. That's a good call. Yeah, <clears throat> you're working on your leadership, ain't you, folding off? So you need you need to get that practice, don't you? <laughs> He's horrible. So I, that's probably why he was sent <laughs> off into the world. I, I reckon Frederick's standing there thinking, oh, this will be interesting to see how this goes. <laughs> yeah, sort of... uh, you can make it at an average, uh, so plus 20. All right. I think he's probably in the kid. I'm just already, you know, you know, leaning into what this is going to be like. He's um, he's he's probably too close to the kid's face. You know, he's probably like rolled up on into his yeah. grill, you know. Uh... There you go. Critical Ooh. fail. Now, you could spend fortune to reroll. Can, can you can reroll critical fails in this, I think. Right. Yes. Savage rules where you can. So, yeah. Yeah. So would you like so. to spend uh, fortune to reroll that? Sure. Let's give it a run. Yeah. Get our first fortune Heck spent. Yeah. Okay. Now it's going to be average Leadership. plus 20. Okay. Oh, look at that. There you go. Okay. So he sort of locks eyes with you and um, he sort he, he seems to harden almost like his eyes kind of he's looking at you with a, a, a more steady glare and he says I think I killed someone you what <laughs> I think we killed someone and Frederick you know that like he's out late at night and a lot of nights and this is ne like he's never I, I a acted this way and B he's never fucking killed or murdered anybody yeah, so with that, I mean, Frederick's like looking left and right, just wondering if he's anybody could have overheard that. Uh, as far as you can tell, no. I mean, it's a busy neighborhood and whatnot too, but uh, yeah, there may be a neighbor who's kind of, uh, you know, nosy Parker, uh, you know, at the window, kind of like, huh. I, I'll give them a stern look and like, yeah. you know, yeah. Mind your, mind your nose kind of thing. And they're kind of like, <laughs> you know, giving you that look. At, you can picture, I think everyone's got the same, like, you know, mid-50s, uh, you know, busybody, uh, you know, house mom, um, who's kind of hmm, looking at you. But then I think once Thognoth gets kind of... Hmm. And I'll just point at... Yeah. She... Like, um, and slams the, the, uh, <laughs> the shutters closed. Um... Thognoth, how are you reacting to this? Uh, you know, I was being, uh, I, I mean, I was interested and I was being conscientious about what was going on, but now I'm more interested. So now I'm, it's heading into more my, uh, you know, my wheelhouse and I'm like, oh, you know, like you might have killed someone, huh? And, and I've been through this. Um, this is actually part of my, uh, you know, whole story yeah. of... Uh, of you know, <clears throat> possibly going down the wrong path. Yeah, you're, before you're thinking, is there a, a temple of Grimnir in here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do I have to march this kid off right now down to the temple of Grimnir? <laughs> um, so um, I get, I'm, I'm like, I kind of pep up. I've got, you know, probably, uh, I don't have to remind, I'm, I, you know, now I'm, I'm kind of strangely grinning now. And I'm like, really? Yeah. Um, and I, I think, say, um, so hmm? with that, then if you're, you're grinning, uh, Frederick is concerned. That brings us to our mid-session break already. <laughs> so oh, yeah. we'll take our mid-session break now, guys, and we'll come back and then we'll see what happens next. So for those listening at home, we'll be back in about five minutes. Bye.
que es. Yep. Yeah, you're in this one. Um, yeah, yeah. You know the sheet is cog. I still can't mm. get that thing to work. Okay, so you you got it open. Yeah, I've got the sheet open. So you got the cog. So on the left hand side, you should have roll options. And there's query difficulty and query additional bonuses. Yeah, they're both on. Yeah, so turn them off. Oh, they're more Shut fun. the sheet. Open the sheet, turn them back on, and try it again. All right, got you. Let's see if that has any effect. Shut the sheet. Where's my mouse not working? She ain't opening now, oh, for Pete's sake. Uh, if you click on the little tab in the corner that sort of pops it out, and then close it and try again. It's gone away, hold on, let's see if... All right. We all, oh, everyone's we back. All... Oh, yeah. Perfect. Then, guys, um, we will be turning our attention elsewhere. We can turn our attention to the Temple of Manan. And a second here, I have one more page I'll set up here. <clears throat> so this is yeah that'll work um, inside uh, the temple of Anon and what we see um, early morning is Talther, uh, you making your way through the halls. You have a task uh, you need to complete for today, and that is to. Oh, terrific! That's great. Great, great, great. Um, Brother Ervig. And this is not what um, uh, what he looks like, but this is uh, an idea of what a fully kitted kind of priest of Manon might look like. Hmm. This. Brother Ervik. Now, even though you are but a lowly initiate, uh, Talther, you have a very important task uh, before you for today. That task is to assist Brother Ervik in the important duty of getting his drink on. Brother Ervik is a very aged member of the uh, Temple of Manan. He is well past his t uh, years. Uh, the arthritis that comes with age uh, has made it, it's impossible for him to be able to be on a ship at any point. If he's out at sea, the pain from his arthritis is likely to be crippling. So what his task is every day is to get up, to march down to the shipwright's arms and to get absolutely pl uh, bl you know, blotto drunk and then at the end of the day, you are to accompany him back. This is, in fact, how, why you were at the Shipwright's Arms and how you ended up meeting up with everyone and with your former companion as well, is because he doesn't want company when he's getting hammered. 
so you're free to go and do whatever else you want. Um, but this is the part of the day where you do actually have to talk to him to get him ready and up. And mm -hmm. as is sometimes often the case with, uh, uh, ad, you know, addicts, he is not pleasant uh, when he is uh, not able to indulge in his uh, favored vice. So tell us how you, how does Talther approach, you know, uh, reaching Brother Ervig's cell and getting him up and ready to go to the arms? Well, uh, he mostly blames the, the other clergy that have something out for him because they always give him the shit duties. Um, but he's he's got to earn his place somehow. So he's he's psyching himself up a bit as he walks towards the cell, yep. um, mostly because he can get a drink as well. Um, and uh, he'll knock somewhat softly at first okay. and then see if that gets a response. So you knock softly. No response. Maybe mm -hmm. he's dead. Maybe he well, finally died. My man on is willing. Take his servant home. Um, but now he'll uh, he'll try the handle and try not to make too much noise because he knows intimately what hangovers do to people. Okay. So you're trying to push the door open and then suddenly someone slams the door shut. I heard you. I'm coming. Hold on. Yes, sir. So you wait about a, a five or ten minutes place you know there are um initiates uh who walk past there's probably a pair of them who walk past they see you outside of uh Ervik's, uh chamber they're both kind of like <laughs> <laughs> laughing at you for the task that you've been appointed finally the door is thrown open and it slams against the you know the the furthest reach that it can go and then he slams the door shut behind and he starts walking off without saying a single word to you. Well, I'll, I'll let him get about 10 or so steps ahead of me before I follow. Okay. Because I don't want to get on his bad side today. I'm not sure he has another side, but <laughs> what you guys can find is as you're making your way through the uh, through the streets of uh, Salzman towards Shipwright Arms, um, if anyone does get kind of in his way, uh, he not so gently kind of sweeps the the blunt end of his uh, staff at them. Fortunately, with age and arthritis, he does not have the dexterity to be able to, or the uh, uh, coordination to, to actually connect with anyone. But I mean, like, he is not discriminating children, women, other elderly people. Ah! You know, yeah, so he eventually makes his way down. Um, so uh, Tathil uh, will, uh, will like lock eyes with them after they start passing by and offer a little head bow and a you know mumbled apology uh, for his his master's behavior. Yep, um, <laughs> they look back at you and uh, if it wasn't for the uh, for fear of um, upsetting Manon, these people probably would take more. But everyone knows somebody who makes their in in Salzenmund, Everyone knows somebody who makes their living from the sea. So to piss off the uh, you know, the god of the sea, it's probably not a good thing. So mm -hmm. they all sort of let it go. Um, you make your way down. Ervig throws the door open to the shipwright arms, uh, shipwright's arms, uh, as uh, carelessly as what he did with his cell, and staggers over to his usual place in the corner, sits down where the uh, waitress very quickly hustles over and uh, puts his. Uh, uh, his drink down in front of him. He pulls it towards him and then sort of gets to just seemingly staring at the table. Um, now, why don't you give us a, let's see here, what would this be? Um, would you have any curiosity about his, um, you know, like what, what, what Arabic was like beforehand or are you just sort of seeing, are you the kind of young person who sees only the old person before him? Well, no, um, uh, uh, Talthir is, uh, you know, raised uh, up in the church orphanage and became a, a priest, and he, he sees this long way ahead of him in the priesthood, which, uh, if it leads to this, he doesn't want to be that, so yep. he's going to try and, you know, see where um, his uh, werewig changed to become better, and maybe divert from that. Um Okay. Why don't you give us so, a yeah, would, gossip roll, and we'll make it uh, we'll make it easy. I am uh, fairly astute at gossiping. 
Yeah. So you wouldn't know what to look at him, but like it's said that while uh, serving, uh, you know, on and as part of the Imperial Navy, like he has faced Norsken Raiders, he has faced Dark Elf Corsairs. Like this guy has a bloody uh, and uh, arguably heroic kind of, at least, certainly at least a, an exciting life behind him. Um, he was definitely, to reach this age and having spent that much time on the waves, he definitely has Manon's blessing, but like, what a, that you don't see any of that evident in the person that you've met and that you've dealt with. Curious, what are they serving him? Is it like good stuff or swell? Oh, it's shit. Oh, that, no wonder he's in a bad mood. Uh, Talther would like to like mosey up to the, uh, the, the counter and maybe I think we can assume them. that this is not the first time you've done this there may be another time where you tried to do something like that mm -hmm. um, and you were the recipient of uh, the uh, end of his uh, trident and you actually feared that there was a fracture in your shin uh, for it because yeah. that pain didn't go away for about two weeks but like so the urge comes and it passes swiftly. Yeah, because you have you probably have tried this before of like, oh, this guy just needs a little like, oh, fuck, no, no, he's mean. No, yeah. oh, God <laughs> damn it. Jeez. He likes his swell. Uh, it could just be what he's like, that he's res he seems to have like angrily resigned himself to this. So uh, Ervig takes his place in the corner and um, you are... Now you kind of do a quick look around. You can see the regular kind of fixtures of the shipwright's arms are here. Uh, there is the proprietor. Uh, there is a bouncer who is a big Bretonian lad who seems to have uh, hired on initially to help with, uh, you know, paying for his family's things and then very quickly realized he has a unrelenting case of seasickness. So he is trying to figure out how to make enough money to make his way back home. Um, but in the interim, and those who may not be familiar, Bretonia is sort of the, uh, the equivalent of France uh, in, um, uh, in the old world. Uh, there in the corner, there is a gambler who is always kind of running a, a sharp. You don't see your friend uh, in here yet, the one who uh, is part of the gang. Um, there is, however, a gaggle of dwarves in one corner. They are, of course, from not uh, Thognoff's clan. They're from the other one, which I... I don't remember. You're from... Let's see here. It was right at the end of this here. Here we go. Um, you're from the Cragforge clan. They are from the Grumson clan, who are said to have been, in part, descended from Norse dwarves. They're always in here, and they're always sort of, like, uh, chatting and talking to one another. Um, Thognoth doesn't seem to get along with them, but then again, Thognoth doesn't seem to get along with many people. And... Uh, what you don't see is Alwyn is not here yet. Neither Frederick or Thoknoth not, or Katarina. So none of your usual friends are here. Where do you think you would put yourself down? Is Talther a, a gambler himself or would he indulge in any kind of pup games? Uh, he does have some skill gambling and he's fairly charismatic. Um, this morning, he I don't think he wants to engage in gambling. Uh, he might... Uh, Talk to the uh, the bouncer, uh, see if there's any news that he's heard or any ruffians in the area. Yeah, that is unusual. Yeah, sure. Um, the I mean, you already rolled a gossip roll, so we'll just let you. I know it's about a different thing. But we'll let you roll that forward. Uh, you talked to him. His uh, name uh, is. Let's see here. Let's give him. Um, uh, I think you call him Eddie. Uh, for uh, Etienne is his uh, full name, but Eddie, he, uh, if you make your way over to him, he's sort of sitting at the uh, at the bar chatting idly with uh, one of the waitresses. It's not busy enough yet to keep everyone occupied, but he sees you walking over. He nods. Good morning, Tatha. Morning, Eddie. How do the seas treat you this morning? Oof. Slow so far. No trouble as yet. Um, those two seem, and he gestures over and there's right near the entrance, there's two, um, you're not sure where these guys are from. They look like maybe they may be laborers. Um, they may have, they have uh, just from their clothing, they've a bit of a Norskin kind of look to them maybe, but there's, that may just be a, a 
descended. There's a district in uh, town that has a lot of folks descended more directly from Norskan uh, tasks, but they seem, and maybe this is just a cultural thing, but they seem pissed off already. And not in the same way that uh, like uh, Ervig is just kind of um, sour about everything. These two seem genuinely on the verge of an argument with one another. <laughs> he says, I'm keeping an eye. Maybe eventful, maybe not. He's a, uh, this guy's a bit of a big lad, but he's not, um, Katarina is probably bigger and Thognoth is certainly stronger than him. And you? I'd glance over at the, uh, the table where my charge is, uh, sitting grumpily and, uh, back at him. The same, usual. Hmm. Well, uh, are you expecting company today? Oh, yes. I hear the group's getting together. That's uh, most likely to be the highlight of my day. Hmm. No. Is Thoughtnoth uh, coming? Is, I believe. I think you may be calling so. the dwarf. Is the dwarf coming? Well, he sticks pretty close to Frederick, so I assume he would. Hmm. Is there a he glance at the, the other dwarves? Yeah. Is it likely to be a problem? Not with them, but... We'll see. Um, I think we'll leave you guys there and we'll talk about Alwyn's start today. Where does Alwyn lay his head? Where do you think he, uh, he's been staying? Um, he's probably sleeping rough a lot of the time. Uh, yeah. he's trying to use his, his wits and his, uh, he sort of his skills. He'll try and find like an empty building or something to, okay. to sort of uh, find a corner, keep himself dry. He hasn't got much in the way of money at the moment, so. Um, <laughs> so maybe your your morning comes with. Um, f forgive me. What's your uh, dog's name? Astrid. Astrid, right? Astrid. Uh, Did, I, I thought I had a token for Astrid. Did we do something? I don't think we did. Am I crazy? Is you hear Astrid is up already. Yep. What on earth are we yelling at? He's a white. Oh, there's another dog large outside. Large white dog. Oh, sound effects, but no token. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're putting the cart for the horse. I'm thinking of... Uh, let's see here. That's the sort of thing. Will that suffice for... Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So let's do this here. What I might do is... Oh no, he actually has a dog. You, you, you poor man. <laughs> He's a number, don't he? <laughs> Let's switch you guys around here because I can put uh, Astrid on the end here. Uh, I'm just going to give you control of the token. I'll let you add uh, hit points and the... Um... Oh, I did, did I give you the stats for her yet? Uh, no, we haven't done anything like that. I didn't know if... Oh, okay. Because it's not a companion or anything. I didn't know if it was yeah, more we'll, uh, we'll figure sort of out what, social uh, sort of thing. Astrid. Yeah. So mechanics. you have control over her. And we'll figure out that uh, between sessions. I don't think she's going to get attacked today. I don't think. We'll see. So with that, um, Astrid sort of licking your face. And you're not... This was not a good night's sleep. I think there is rules for sleeping uh, rough. I'm not going to bother uh, looking them up just now. You can see that... Uh, oh, boy. You're probably somewhere down um, over in... Uh, closer to Frederick's neck of the woods. Somewhere in an alley here. And you can hear people stirring. Uh, Astrid has woken you up because people are stirring inside the house, so you need to kind of get yourself fucking going. And yeah. your day today is at the um, uh, shipwright's arms with the the others. Yeah, I mean, I'll be packing up, and as quiet quiet as a mouse, I'll be trying to sure. sneak away. Why don't you give us a stealth check? We'll make this uh, average. Let's see if there's any. I told you not to sleep here. Yeah. Okay, average. No problem. She's five degrees of success. 
Yeah, so you are gone. Practiced. No one has any idea that you were there, and you and Astrid start making your way through the um, uh, through the winding streets. Alvin have anything to do uh, before he arrives at the shipwright's arms? No, he's keen to meet up and get some gossip and find out if anything's happening and basically looking to raise some money and yeah, find some adventure. Okay. So you're making your way, your stomach maybe grumbling a little bit. Astrid also is a little uh, hungry. And when you get to the um, shipwright's arms, I think it's probably the kind of place where you could probably bring your dog in <laughs> to dive. Yeah, that's why he visits there, I think. Yeah. So uh, as you um, uh, make your way in, um, would you give us a perception check, please? We'll make this one easy. Ooh. You want to fate point that or fortune point that? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Easy. Nice. Okay. As you make your way in, um, you can hear uh, the, the, the kind of... Th Whoa, what happened to my camera there? It's weird. Um, as you make your way in, what you immediately hear is sort of the muttering to the side, some angry kind of cursing, and someone is saying something, uh, something about Middenheimer and is not happy whatsoever. Astrid has the ba the uh, back of, of her uh, fur is all up and she's growling at them. Um, and you hear something else, uh, Bassard, Ulrich, worshippers. Not welcome here. Just coming to cause trouble. Spies, I think. And the other one seems to be like, shut up, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but before you really kind of get into things, you look over and you can see Talther is already here and he kind of waves to you. Yeah, I think I will, if there's room, go and sit with Talther, but just be constantly staring over in their direction uh, yeah. just to keep an eye on them and make sure, sure and just hold in Astrid. Yeah, do you have, uh, I think there's an animal handling skill, isn't there? I've got animal, animal care. care. Yeah, yeah, animal... Mm. Animal training, I think, is what we're looking for. Uh, charm animal. Got animal care. Oh, yeah, charm animal. Do that. Do that, please. Yeah. Yeah, okay. perfect. There's some really expansive <laughs> pet training stuff in here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is it's secretly Pokemon we're playing. Or... Is it average by default? Uh, e... This will be easy. You know Astrid fairly well. Okay. Okay. So it takes maybe one call uh can you walk forward and you're like astrid astrid and uh then she finally stops looking at him and comes over and joins you and uh, you guys sit down um as you're sitting down is about the same time that uh katarina uh has the the door throws open and the unmistakable form of this very tall woman uh walks in uh as well katarina you come in and uh there seems to be some grumbling at this corner to your left as you walk in, but you can see that uh, Alwyn and his dog and Talther have already sort of met up and they're making their way towards a, a table that you guys often uh, join yourself at. Oh, you might be muted, Carl. So everyone have a drink for Mo. Yeah. Yeah. So you make um. your way... Uh, yeah, so Katarina probably gives a nod to those grumblers in the corner. She's always pleasant. She always smile, is smiling, you know. So, um, she's very charming. God, I, they're muttering about Shalia now. Like, they just seem oh, to the type that they're just pissed off about whatever is in eyes. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, she she just, she knows that, you know, even though, even though if those grump, well, no one grumbles at Shalia when they're bleeding out. So, you know. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But she won't. She won't point that out to them. She'll just, you know, you know, and then walk over to her friend. She gives give Talther a big whack on the back. You know. Yeah. <laughs> he half rolls over the table. <laughs> um, and she kind of uh, sniffs at at Alwyn, pets the dog. Um, she, and then she goes. She in goes, contrast you know, to those she, people over in the corner, she very much likes you. Yeah. So. Uh, she goes, Alwyn, you know you can stay at the hospice or even at the temple. You don't have to sleep on the street. 
Yeah, I mean, he, he looks a bit roughly shaven and uh, he smells a little bit, but he's got this strange I mean, we also attractive have scraps. charm. So we also have scraps for Astrid too, you know. Well, <laughs> if, if, if things get hard, maybe I'll take you up on that offer. Yeah. So I one mean, of the things I was thinking about too. Remember, people get. I hear people get hungry up here in Nordland. So, mm. and one thing to, to if we were to be listening in on this conversation, one thing I just want to point out is that uh, in the Empire there will be regional accents too. In the same way that like um, there, you can tell someone from Liverpool, from someone from Manchester, from someone from you know Birmingham. Um, Katarina would sound very different from Talther, who would sound different from Alwyn. Alwyn and Talther would be fairly close, but you could tell that Alwyn is not from here. You could tell that Katarina is not from here. Yeah, and Katarina has like a almost aristocratic type. Yeah, and there's that, know, that added factor in too, that's Athena. true. Yeah, because you've got the, the station as well. She enunciates. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to Talther, who could, you know... <laughs> happily string together words but they you know not full ones um well. so you guys are, are sitting in here and um what i'd like each to do is give us a gossip roll please we'll make it an average and we'll see if you guys have heard if there's any new kind of scuttlebutt that you guys have heard uh, over the course of uh things <laughs> impressive failure <laughs> that's some great phrasing by the game uh so alvin you could of course spend a fortune point to re-roll that if you'd like oh, wow. ditto for katarina no, Katarina has her own. She's probably not really. She's more thinking of like she's going to share the gossip that she has. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Talther's okay. ears are like worse. <laughs> attuned to gossip, but just like. Shh. So here's what um, Talther. There's there's two kind of tidbits that you've heard about in, in the last that, uh, and this is not necessarily uh, pertain to the city. Maybe because of your you know your desire to sort of travel that you're thinking of other places. But there's two things you've heard. First thing you've heard is that um, there is apparently, a, to the south of the city, in the Silver Hills, um, travelers have been encountering bands, uh, or at least spotting, bands of mutants. Some kind of things. They're not robbing anybody. They're not necessarily attacking anybody, but they've seen them skulking out there. And the word is that if you're seeing them out there, that there must be more uh, than those who have let, you know been so foolish as to be spotted. That that is not good. If if there is a rise of uh, mutants out there, then the ruinous powers uh, may not be far from behind. Um, the other thing you've heard is that apparently in one of the dwarven communities in the Silver Hills, they're having a curious problem that they're attributing to, and this is maybe why you've you've heard this, to a, so the story goes that one of these dwarves managed to piss off somehow a priest from a priest of Manan while they were in town. They offended this priest and the priest called upon a uh, a, called upon a curse or, or called a curse down upon them and one of the regular plagues on ships is of course rats does not seem to be a way of getting rid of these things but it's said that just like rats scurrying onto a ship up their cables rats somehow got into the caravan leading back to these mines and now they are experiencing a just a, a bedeviling uh, amount of rats to the mm. point where th it might even interfere with the silver uh, and or the the uh, delivery of silver and the crag what did, what did I say the crag swarm what are they called crags berg cragsheim what's the other clan called cragforge the cragforge are never in the centuries that they have been active in the hills. They've never been late in a delivery, but it seems that the unthinkable might be. So the scuttlebutt is like, well, how are they going to, how are they going to apologize? How are they going to make amends with, with Manon to call, have this curse called off of them? Well, there's of two minds of that. One, he wants to know exactly what they did to piss off a priest. Um, because he finds that hilarious. 
Yeah, uh, a, a fight different. apparently. Disagreement. Dwarves can find offense. Uh, you know, they have an, an uncanny ability to, if there is offense to be found, uh, they can find it. And they seem to, things seem to exacerbate, not to the point of violence, but certainly the threat of violence. And he said, then that's where. The, uh, the other mind he has on this is like, this is a potential opportunity that, you know, he could, you know, find a way to make a name for himself and resolve the issue. But he, he shelves that in the back of his mind for later. <laughs> nice. So, um, having shared the, both of those uh, stories with uh, Alwyn and Katarina, do you guys have any thoughts on those developments at all? Or uh, the rats? Yeah, I mean, how? Well, I guess you don't really know about how what rats really are in the, in the old world, right? I mean, that's yeah. yeah. Um, what was the other one on? Oh, green skins, right? Uh, yeah, no, no, uh, mutants. Yeah, mutants. Oh, yeah. I guess uh, if Talther shares that, she's she wonders. She goes, well, didn't um, didn't the emperor say it's okay? Mutants are okay, and we we should be friends. Well, you do you know how people get when uh, mercy, you know, mercy oh. to all. You know how people get when uh, a bunch of unknowns show up in their doorstep and they think the worst things? Well, because okay. anyway, something closer to home, I've heard people have been affected by the red dreams again. You guys would be I... all familiar with this as well. So, oh, and this would be something relatively new that you've heard of. Hmm. So I was, yeah. I visited, uh, I was visiting the hospice and, uh, they had some trouble overnight. So, so I don't know. Madmen running in the streets. I think that's more of a pressing concern than mutants and traveling in the hills. I'm sure these dwarfs would be grateful, though, if we could help them in their mines. A silver mine. There's got to be some money in that. Oh, yeah. Enough to, to set us up well, so we can do some real change and help people. But I can finally buy a bow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, certainly, certainly help ourselves so, more. Well, if we help those dwarves, is that going to upset our dwarf? You know how dwarves are. Yeah, Thognoth, how much has Thognoth talked about his reasons for coming to uh, Salzenmund with uh, the others? Um, I think he's probably just shared it. How much? How much time? I know I've been with Frederick the most, right, Kevin? Yeah. How much time has he spent with the rest at this uh, point? Would you say probably quite? I mean, at, at least a couple of months of of kind of lurking at the shipwright's arms. I mean, he's he's told Frederick the most. Um, I will. I would say. Yeah. Um, and you get bits and pieces. I think the rest have gotten bits and pieces. And, and you know, really, Thognoth doesn't even know. So, I mean, that kind of spills into the fact that it's not like Thognoth is holding this secret. He doesn't, he's trying to find it out himself. So, yeah, yeah it, there's not this big thing to tell. Like, what, what uh, you guys would all sort of know is that, like, dwarves are not the most, um, they're, they're certainly not keen on uh, people prying into their business. But what you likely would know is that he looks he looks different. Dwarven slayers are one of the, they're not like the con, the most common thing you would see, but they are certainly the most noticeable and they would be in that kind of adventuring community. Um, Thognoth does not have dyed hair. He does not have a mohawk or any other kind of sort of crazy accoutrement and he wears a lot of armor. So he's not a slayer. Slayers, there's a reason that they're out there, and you, unless you want to get murdered, you don't ask about why they're out there. But for other dwarves, they're not as sensitive about the reasons for traveling, like what slayers are. But you know, unless he's offered it, you probably wouldn't pry. Which is to say that yeah. you probably don't know what his relationship is like with the um, his community back home. Uh, yeah, sure. Mil Go ahead. Huh? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Sean, I was just wondering, in our little chats where I've been pestering you, mm -hmm. or, or, or where Frederick's been uh, pestering Vognoff, do you think um, he, he sort of managed to weasel out of him that it, it, it may have been... Uh, as, as the, as, as he let slip about the ultimatum, it, or even hinted that he... 
may have needed to kind of come out and um could because you know does he know about the mentor relationship and because because uh frederick's nature would be to try and assist because he's 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 quite a charismatic and friendly guy so I, i'm thinking he might have suggested well you know i can you know perhaps i can help you with this mission type of thing do you think he might have let a bit slip or yeah i think the um the two places maybe even three but the um that wouldn't apply as much like around the family table but that would probably be his own family table like his own family but besides that the tavern and the campfire i think would be um and and liquor definitely helps so if you get thognoth liquored up at the tavern you know classic stereotype of um that's when he'd be the and, and he knows you the best so at that point you know you get him good and liquored and you you know he knows you and you're there for a while and you hit you hit his right button you know you ask a question maybe maybe it's his mentor or something his name and and he'll get going he'll get going and um and maybe then you, you can't even shut him up maybe temporarily you know and then uh because he's got uh, he's deep in his cups uh, that would be so yeah i think you'd have you'd have the best shot at probably yeah, and he doesn't really have. That's not even a deep secret. He just doesn't talk about it much. You know. No, that's it. That's what I'm thinking. You know, he, he he don't really see the relevance. I don't suppose why anybody would be interested or. It's right. not the dwarf. No, yeah. way. It's not the dwarf yeah. white. But maybe. but he's drinking. It's it's alcohol and location, tavern liquor or campfire liquor, or 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 more serious around a family table. But that that'd be different. But mm -hmm. those are the, like the three locations I would. Otherwise, he's. He's pretty. The only thing he wants to talk about is maybe starting trouble. You know, uh, kind of good nature lately, maybe a little bit. But yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, th that answers uh, what I was um, curious of is how much the rest of the party would have known about the his circumstances, his connection with the uh, the dwar the uh, Cragsforge uh, clan. Bits and pieces. Bits and pieces, probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's around that time. Oh, yeah. Unless, is there any other comments that you guys would have around the table between Talther, Alwyn, and uh, Katarina? I don't think so. Just general catch okay. up, chit chat. As you minor jabs at each other's religion, but aside from that. <laughs> okay. Um, as you are doing so, the. Um, uh, what you also can. Uh, uh, oh, um, actually, Tall Three, what you. I guess Katarina would probably say again probably for the 20th time that uh that tall woman that works for the doctor creeps her out lotta hmm yeah lotta the tell they like leans in interested uh um and then <laughs> tall like, woman catches, you say. <laughs> catches himself and leans back again uh, <laughs> how's she doing same doesn't say a word just kind of stares i try to crack jokes but you know yeah she's very serious so uh as you guys are are kind of getting settled into your first drinks or whatnot you can still hear those two in the corner are getting more agitated uh with one another um you can see that uh um eddie has gone over and kind of said like hey hey settle down and uh they simmer down a little bit and then he goes back to talking to the waitress once again and uh it's about maybe 15 minutes later when the door opens and Friedrich and Thognoth uh, walk in. Morning. And the two are uh, look over and kind what of glare at you. Here? And then so Freddy comes in first and they sort of uh, two in the, at, uh, to the left of you look at you. But then <laughs> Thognoth stomps in full armor and they both go back to their drinks right away. Those were dwarves, Kevin. No, no, no. These are uh, uh, probably Norse, Norse descended or Norse descended. There uh, are dwarves in the corner, but they're dwarves from the other clan. So, gotcha. Yeah. So uh, I think Thognoth notes the uh, Northerners and uh, marks marks them later for a tussle. Yeah. Well, here's what you guys know is that this is after you've had your conversation with Conrad. Um. So you're probably looking a little more. Um, Grimson is, is what it was. I was double checking that I had the name right in my head for the other clan. They're the Grimson clan. So, and Grimson. they probably talk in a 
uh, I mean, they always would uh, be speaking in Kazalid, uh, and meaning that it's only them around the table who could, you know, uh, understand one another. But you guys can see that um, Frederick and uh, Thognoth both seem a little, a little, a little off. Freddy is still his, you know, uh, his boisterous, friendly kind of self, but he seems a little off. Um, Evan, would you say the clans typically get together or get along, but or don't get along the two? Not, I mean, they're not like at war with one another, but because the um, Cragforge clan is descended from like Imperial Dwarves or those who would be, you know, part of one of the Karaks, um, and the Grimson are much more like inter, they're almost human, you know, uh, with Norse kind of qualities to them. Uh, they don't, the Grimsons don't do any of the mining. So they're probably very different. It's not necessarily that they are at odds or they're contesting with one another. They're just so different that you, how could you even, you might not even call them dwarves. They've Unless a human says culture. they're not like that. In which case then, yeah, you will fucking have words with that human. Of course they're dwarves. Gotcha. Yeah. So let me tell you what, um, Freddy and Thognoth, what you got out of Conrad. Yeah. Conrad, and I'll let you guys uh, tell us how you informed the rest of the party about this. So Conrad and his friends were out last night down near the docks, as they are often wanting to do. There's things left behind. There's drunken, you know, passed out sailors that you can harass or rob. Um, there's just all sorts of, of great trouble you can get up to when you're down near there. And whatever stories there are of monsters coming out of the mist over the Ormsteep, um, they don't really, they're too young to, to care about that or too stupid, you know. Probably a combination of the two. What they said is that when they heard, they had thought that there was a... Um, they thought there was a sailor who was struggling. They thought they were going to catch a sailor, you know, at his business with a prostitute um, underneath one of the docks. And what instead they found is someone who was struggling to try and get themselves out from a... They somehow got themselves caught up in a uh, cast off part of a net and they were caught in the water and trying to pull themselves out. But when the kids went down to get close enough, this guy seemed to try and attack them for some fucking reason. Maybe he was out of his mind or whatever else. And one of the others hit him with something that they were carrying, a cudgel of some kind. And he fell down under the water and they could hear him struggling. He shifted somehow and got himself stuck. So he was being held under by the net and they ran away. But they're confident that they killed that guy because they caused him to get trapped up in that net and he's drowned. They didn't go Your back. Time? It was at night, right? Last night? You Last said, night. You said? Yeah. Mm. It's a heavy burden for someone so young. And the Shipwrights Arms is actually on, like, it's closer to stop off here than it is to uh, to go and in inspect it itself, which is, I think, why you guys stopped off here. And I think I would have, uh, on the way after and on the way, uh, you know, asked Frederick how he wanted to. I I'm looking for to Frederick for cues because uh, Thognoff is, would be handling, would want to handle it directly. Yeah. But, you know, he knows that Frederick's, uh, you know, it's Frederick's family, so he's looking for Frederick's guidance on even how much to talk about it or or you know do we go to the beach or you know what yeah. do you want to do and frederick how would you have handled that with conrad i'll say uh we've got to keep this quiet i've got to speak to my old man he'll know what to do he'll know what to do i'll speak to my old man and maybe we'll go go and sit up go see a holy man or something and i mean it's just accident wasn't it? it was just accident i mean the guy went for him and he got a clump and it's not really their fault. So it's all a bit unfortunate is how I see it. It's, it's death by misadventure. If, if in fact he is dead. And what was he doing down there anyway? What's he doing? I mean, no, no, we've got to keep this quiet, Fognoff. I mean, I mean, well, what do you think? I mean, 
you you you're a wise fella you you've been down there you've been I bet you've seen a lot worse well from what you're saying you've seen a lot worse than this I don't really know what to do other than speak to my old man I think that's a I, I think that's a good idea uh we got to check the beach he, he may not be dead uh we can't jump to conclusions uh Look for him. Talk to your old man, and um, and there's always the what was what was the temple, Kevin, that I was taken to again, the temple of uh, Grimnir. And there's always the temple of Grimnir. I say somewhat, you know, puzzlingly, you know, if, if yeah. Grimnir, you know Grimnir? Grimnir, you're joking. That's a bit serious, isn't it? To be talking about Grimnir. I, I mean... can't judge conclusions, but you know, I'm just saying. And oh. look, look how I turned out. Look how I turned out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, no. It'll be fine. Maybe we'll we'll, we'll 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 go down there, have a look around, ask a few questions, see if anybody you know, casual casual sort of thing, and find out find out if anything's turned up. I, I'm sure. I'm sure. Anyway, you know what Conrad's like. He's probably a lad of old, but mind you, I don't know. He did look mighty. He did look mighty upset. He did. Can you can you swim? Can I swim? Yeah. Yeah. Of course I can swim. Can't you swim? Well, uh, like a rock. I'd rather not take off my armor for one day. Yeah, oh, but, uh, yeah. Well, don't worry. You won't need to do any swimming. If there's any swimming to be done, I'll do it. I'll, find, I'll, I'll, have, I'll get one of the boys, one of the youngsters. They can do some swimming. I'll keep an eye on you from the shore. Yeah, all right. Anyway, remember what I said. Mum, mum's a word. I'll, I'll, I'll take your cue for it. So Good stuff. With that in mind, what would you be sharing with your colleagues as you're stopping off here? You have not yet stopped by. Uh, you have clear directions from Conrad where this is supposed to have happened, um, but you have not yet stopped by there. Um, what, you, what do you think your reason for seeking out counsel from your other friends would have been? Um, well, I, I reckon we just have a like. Would we just have a bit of a scheduled meeting that we, we we just meet up with them on a cert every now and then and this is just we said we'd we'd be here and perhaps um frederick had forgotten this so we turned up for breakfast then we realized we, we've kind of got double booked and uh fognoff being uh kind of new to it all didn't like to say anything and although we perhaps thought it was a bit irregular uh frederick's a bit more scatty mm -hmm. and and then just kind of oh, got caught up talking to Conrad. They thought, oh, we're supposed to be somewhere else. And so they've kind of yeah, come yeah. on a bit of a rush. And that's why he's coming through the door all full of the joys of spring because it's all a bit of a front to yeah. disguise the fact he's a bit concerned. So it's, are, he's, he's compensating in his cheerfulness. For uh, Freddie and Thogdenoth, are you guys trying to hide any of your, um, any concern you may have about this issue? Oh, yeah, definitely. That's why I come in through the door so sort of like brassy and... Yeah. So why don't yeah. I... And I think it'd be, you know, I picture it'd be easier for Thognoth because he's gruff anyway. He doesn't say a lot and he just, you know, he just he just takes up his usual uh, countenance. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But who does? But who does? But he's not all that concerned anyway, is he, Thognoth? This is just like, this is... I... It's something to be handled. I think he's more, yeah, more direct. Like, um, you know, let's just let's just go down to the beach and take care of this. Let's just, you know, let's, yeah. let's go. Uh... <laughs> just another oh. day at the office, isn't it? Okay, now I think. Well, Unless we so should get Katarina, the ball at the tavern. Go ahead, sorry. So Katarina would probably see them and say, oh, how, how's it going, boys? How are marvelous. you doing? Yeah, marvelous. Uh, uh, how are you, Katarina? Is, um, you looking well? Yes, yes, I just, uh, just seeing how you guys are doing, there's been a, cause she's fixated on this dream thing anyway. Yeah. Uh, so she's like, I've heard that a lot of people have had bad dreams, so just wondering if you guys, it's kind of going around, you know, sometimes. No, no, I'm all right, thankfully. Yeah, I wouldn't want maybe when people that. get, get a little hungry. Why yeah, maybe. Don't... I'm trying to... Katarina is also a very good swimmer, just FYI. It yeah. Is, it is an advanced skill, by the way. If you, oh, okay. If yeah. you don't, if you didn't take it, you can't swim. All right. I can't then. <laughs> yeah, um, it'd, it'd be a shame if a priest of Manon couldn't swim. I so know that'd be a shame. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, that could be part of like maybe they just they hang out and go. You know, does, does Calthor know to swim? Does Calthor know to swim? He, he, he knows. How they to probably swim, they yeah. probably hang out. Katarina and Calthor probably go do some laps now now and then. So I don't I think he enjoys it that much. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, the water's cold. Yeah. Would okay. you? Uh, let's hear. Thognoth and Frederick, would you give us charm checks at uh, challenging? And Katarina, Talther, and Alwyn give us uh, intuition at challenging. Charm appears to be the skill you'd use for deception. Astounding failure. <laughs> would you like to uh, fortune point that? Uh, sure. Katarina. Okay, Talther's pretty good. I think Katarina's gonna fortune point. Yeah, go right ahead. Her is too. I mean, I've only got a 12% chance. Do you have fortune something you have a 12% chance for? Let's see. That's Why not? how much you really want it. Yeah, you get your fortune points back at the start of next session, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can also spend right. fate points Jeez. to make sure you get wow. it. 97, <laughs> astounding. That's worse. Wow. Yeah, it's it's worse. Oh, I got better. Okay, it was it's, better. A, it's a failure, but not uh, yeah. okay. and standard failure. Okay, so Talther got a success, so minus six, minus two, uh, and minus seven, four, oh, all right. So, um, Katarina and Alwyn, you may not pick up on it, but Talther, there's definitely something, that, like, Freddy's manic um, friendliness is definitely trying to conceal something. Something is bothering him, and Thognoth is... Man, there's something unsettling when he's trying to be ch like cheerful and normal. Well, uh, Telther uh, uh, kind of expresses his um, skepticism with a raised eyebrow and a slightly shift in his body language as he looks at Frederick. And you could read like he knows something's going on, but he's staying tight-lipped about it. Okay. So, Freddy, from what uh, John's saying, I, I think you can pick up that Telther's like he's kind of holding your eyes. Like, is everything okay? kind of yeah. look and again we've already established that these guys all know one another so I think you can while Thognoth and Frederick know each other well uh, best you all trust each other and know each other well enough to uh, if you were to share this information that you would be confident they're not going to rush to the authorities or whatnot. They would be taking your side on this more so than others and, and Talthir is <laughs> discreet uh, if there's something you don't want to say publicly he's not going to press you on it mm. Who does Talfer give a look to? Well, he will, he will, he will say, uh, Talfer, you you good swimmer, aren't you? Well, I can swim, unlike most people. Well, something's come up. I need to get need to get down to the um, down to the wharf and um, need to have a little a little bit of a poke about. It's a bit sensitive. If we had, I don't know, if we if if we had an hour or two spare, um, I could do with a little bit of assistance. I could explain more on the way. Other glances over at his uh, priestly charge, and he knows the priest is going to be here all day, and nobody's going to mess with him. I got time. So is he saying just so everyone can hear? Yeah, yeah, you guys are all, all can yeah. hear this out around the table. Oh, well, Katarina will volunteer. I can, I'm a good swimmer. I'm a good swimmer. She's, she's also tall enough to like walk most, most of the way without risk of drowning. Jeff, all right, right. Well, well, Katarina, <laughs> I didn't realize I was just on the basis of, you know, who he is and what he does. But I, I hadn't realized you was a good swimmer. So that would be perfect. The more the merrier, shall we say. Well, does Katarina have time? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's later in the, the... You guys are meeting up fairly early in the morning here. Okay. Yeah, because I have that meeting with Mother Agatha. Uh, yeah. yeah. Agatha. So Katarina goes, oh, well, it's cold, but... Let me well, guess, we'll uh, be, we, we, a little both, warmer here summertime. Yeah, well, with both of you there, we can be even quicker. We get you back for your meeting. No problem at all. I'm sure it's... I'm sure everything will be fine. It's, I'll explain on the way. I don't, and I wouldn't mind getting away from them two miserable sods over there as well, because they're starting to irritate me with their mumbling and grumbling. 
Yeah, they're getting a little more, the, the things seem to be getting a little bit more heated um, as you look over. Um, anyone have any other things they wish to say or comment on? Or? I'm gonna put down a Stein quickly, uh, uh, because it looks like we're going and I wanna get, get a good ale in my belt. Okay, to, uh, so you're still yeah. trying to get the waitress's attention. Hey, yeah. hey, 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 hey. Yeah, the short people aren't getting uh, aren't getting called upon. Yeah. Yeah. Katarina will Katarina will help. She'll grab a stein for Dognot. Oh, uh, much appreciated. So you'll get up. You're, we'll see. You're heading over to the bar. What about Alwyn? Um, they'd be looking to uh, maybe walk up with him and try and sleight of hand a drink off a table or something. Okay. Where someone's gone off to the privy or. Sure. Yeah. So you get up and you're you're kind of wandering through the um, uh, the the tables. Katarina's gone up to the bar. Frederick, you look back. You can hear voices get even louder if you've been mindful of those guys. Uh, so you look over and what you witness is it seems that someone has reached a breaking point because one of them finally lapsing into what you guess is is Norse and. Uh, starts shouting at the other one, and it's the one with his back. There's one sitting against the wall that is facing in the towards the open part of the uh, of the pub. The other one is facing the other way. It's the one facing the wall that finally loses his temper. He grabs the other guy by the ears, and then just bam, 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 and he's slamming his face against the table. And at first you think, oh, that's Norse stuff until you realize that he keeps fucking doing it. And this guy's face is getting mashed to the point where you're seeing blood and aqueous humor and vitreous humor smashing back. Mm. And it's at that point that Eddie kind of like, whoa, whoa, and is he's gonna start making his way over towards there. But this big dude does not seem to have any indication of oh, oh, stopping this. Do you guys wish to do anything about that or are you waiting to see how Eddie handles it? I well, ask because if we're- Katarina Katarina has to. I mean, okay. the guy's being mauled, so she has to. So yeah, is and, and answer, right? Talther is going to also help out because uh, that guy looks bigger than Eddie. And let's, Eddie's my friend. Yeah, so let's. Um, what do you call it? I'm just going to put a token. I'll out. just be looking to kind of cause a distraction, Kevin. Just pitch a sure. kind of a so cup let's, of stop and lob it at the guy at the earliest opportunity. Yeah, the reason I ask is I think what we'll do then is we will drop into initiative order. Uh, so, uh, and then everyone can take actions here. So, um, we're just going to use for now the uh, the default initiative order. So if you click on your token, and I think there is an initiative button. It should pop in combat. combat. Yeah. In combat. Yeah. Let me just your initiative score there. Let me get this. Okay. And their initiative is. If you tick on your your icon, where where is it? I mean, it's under combat, oh, I believe. Combat, combat controls. Yeah. Controls upper uh, right right side. Under combat. Yep. Okay. Those little cheat sheet buttons, the kind of the shorthand buttons that uh, six of them. Uh, One of them's initiative. In fact, it's directly under. Um, you know, those tabs, the main combat magic advances, you just click on combat, it's directly under that on the right. I've got so many windows. <laughs> uh, were you able to find that, uh, Frederick? No, uh, under combat, controls. On the right uh, side, yeah, under controls. First one. And there's a button there, initiative, you see oh, it, yeah. of the six? Oh, I'm looking straight yeah. at it, yeah. <laughs> All right, so then, I think we got everyone. Yeah, the Norse gonna be going uh, last. So, uh, Thognoth, you're up first. Uh, anything you wish to do? Um, Thognoth, if possible, would like to make a, you know, with, uh, since he, he comes here regularly, maybe he can make real quick, or in fact, you know what? He doesn't even try eye contact. He just points at his equipment. Um, I guess because we bring in our equipment, right? You know, yep. this isn't the kind of place you check in at the door. You. He, he he calls out the bartender's name, points at his equipment, and then charges 
the um, the guy holding the ears. Like, sorry. So what you can do in a turn is you can move and you can take an action. I'm not clear what your action is here. Uh, charging. Oh, so you're not picking up any weapons. You're not whatever. You're just going to run in at the dude? If I if I don't see him holding a weapon, I won't pick up a weapon. No, he's making an effective use of that table as a weapon. Um, right. Right. But, okay, great. So let's talk about charging. Okay, if you're not engaged in combat, uh, you can use your move to charge. If you charge, your action must be a melee test to attack an opponent. Um, and it sounds like you are grappling, right? Yeah, going for kind of a cannon, dwarven cannonball yep. uh, grapple situation. Yep. Um, okay, so then this is going to be an uh, opposed test of strength it looks like no that's if you begin your turn grappling forgive me so is there an uh melee brawling there we go melee brawling yeah, yeah. heck yeah so yeah you go racing over thoggoth go ahead this is a contested roll so go ahead and give us your melee brawling Use his weapon. Not skills. that I have melee brawling uh, in my early career just here. Just be basic. But I'll have to yeah. work on that. Well, you get a, keep, you do get uh, a for charging. You get a bonus. Yeah, I was I was uh, thinking that. Yeah, plus one advantage. So uh, plus ten uh, to your uh, to your action. So let's see. So should I? Um, so I. So I. So I add one advantage to my character sheet. Is that correct? Uh, the the character sheet does not automatically add the plus ten percent. Is the thing you can do that that way. And what we could, oh, maybe we could use the green bar for that, eh? And you know what? Uh, I, I on was the prompt, there's an little... SL. There's a S that adds an SL or something. Mm. Yeah, uh, target bonus. Uh, you can put that. Yep, target bonus. Yep. S SL I was... success level. I was playing around with it a little bit last night, and I, I thought it did add it, so we can keep an eye on it to see what it does. And, um, the advantage, I mean. Oh, did it add it? Okay, great. Uh, so here we I go. I thought got... it did, so we can we There can we go. Play, I'm we just quickly setting up the green bar for okay. advantage for everyone as well. Uh, and I'm going to set it at a maximum of uh, five. I can't remember what the max is uh, for it. I know there's a couple of uh, options for it and we're going oh, to yeah. we talked about this before we started the campaign too but like I will uh, I am definitely interested in trying out the um, advantage rules from up in arms uh, but I think mm -hmm. for now we'll just get the kind of the basics going and then we'll we'll t uh, dabble in uh, optional rules once we uh, once we have a little more experience with it and by we I mean me <laughs> See here, I know uh, Carl and Sean already have plenty of experience with this game. So let's see here, can everyone see? I, I'm just going through them slowly here. Can everyone see the green bars of those who I have filled out so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Great. Perfect. And one more to go here. Cool. So then you you'll be able to track your advantage right from your tokens from now on. And I'll take a look at the rules for max advantage nice. uh, on um, uh, after the session. Well, after the, this afternoon's basic charity session. was up to 10, but that was the basic option. Oh, right, right. Yeah, and the option is for capping it at like a, your... Yeah, different amounts. I don't know. Intro. Double initiative bonus is another option. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk, maybe we'll talk about that on the, on the server, uh, the Discord server afterwards. But okay, so then you go racing. You got plus one, uh, one advantage. So go ahead, maybe let's let's see if it rolls in. It's challenging, right? Combat, so it's challenging. Challenging, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And should I? I'll leave the target. I'll leave the, um, you know, like SL bonus at zero and see what happens. Does that seem right? Seem yes. Good. Or yeah, because okay. I don't think you've got anything that grants a bonus too. Okay, so that's a minus one, but it's a contested roll, so that doesn't matter. Um, okay. I got a success level of minus four, so that means Ooh, you succeed nice. by two. Nice. So go ahead and roll. Uh, oh no, you! That just means you're. Oh, you slam into this guy, and uh, he. Uh, let me make a quick check here. And I can't tell if it added advantage or not. Can anyone else tell? Let's see. Uh, what's your normal score on it? What's your normal target number? Uh, uh, I have a fifty-one in weapon skill, so it did not. It's a, it doesn't uh, seem like it did. There, if you, you hug it, uh, hover over target number, what the fifty one that was shooting for? Yeah, it doesn't. It right, it, it doesn't show. Yeah, it doesn't so, show anything, right? Yeah, because the advantage would have bumped that up to sixty one. Yeah, that would have been. Yeah, a, yeah that would have been a, a success. 
that would have been a success. Though. Yeah. So, so then, uh, yeah, actually, it would have been five. So yeah. So you slam into this guy, and what I rolled for is his strength. You hit him, and he sort of knocks back and hits against the wall. He still has not let go of his ally. You sort of drag his body forward a bit as well. So Thognoth is grappling with this Norskin. Katarina, what are you doing? Katarina's going to charge the uh, the guy who's getting beat up, like trying to hit him, so tackle him, so he can pull him away from the yeah, yeah, from the guy who's mauling him. Excellent. I think so. We'll she's charging is... that guy too. Yeah, you're definitely so. going to be able to uh, to grab him. Go ahead and just roll a strength check. Add a plus ten from your advantage. Okay. Holy shit. Uh, so I got, uh, three degrees of success. Ooh. Yeah, it turns out being pissed uh, off helps me uh, with your bonuses. Like, yeah. And you said it's just challenging, but then a bonus of plus 10? Yeah. Let's see if it, okay. Yeah, because of your advantage. Nice. Uh, oh, no, because it's a five. Now, you could, uh, we're in the last few minutes of the session. You yeah. could uh, fortune point that? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fortune point it. Heck yeah. Okay. If not, it's just a one big, ugly brawl now. There you go. Nice. So you pull the guy free, and mm -hmm. you can see it like, uh, even at a glance, you don't need to make a healing check or me a medicine check. Mm -hmm. Like this guy, his face and his whole front of his skull has been caved in by this guy. Ugh. Is he like dead? dead? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> uh, Talther, what are you doing? Ooh, uh, that's brutal. Uh, well, my dwarven friend is currently engaged in a grapple with the insane man. Yeah. I'm gonna intone a prayer to. Uh, to, to Manon to see if I can bless the dwarf with a bit more weapon skill for battle. Mm, okay, yeah. And what is the difficulty? <laughs> There's a running. Uh, uh, God, what was that? Uh, uh, I think Dumb and Dumber is the one where one of the extras or one of the guys supporting people in the thing uh, improvised the line, kick his ass, Z Bone! <laughs> that was a running joke for me and my friend for a long time. So this is effectively your prayer that you, gotcha. <laughs> you're giving him. What difficulty value am I shooting for? Uh, I think it's challenging, isn't it, for prayers? Or... I Let's see should here. tell you under the... Under the prayer? Which blessing the, are you the, shooting the, for? The, the, uh, battle. Blessing of battle, okay. Uh, so then... I could write these in there, where is it? Uh, to enact a blessing or miracle, make a challenging prey test. If you store okay. a success, uh, your blessing or miracle manifests according to the rules, and a high SL will give you a bonus effects. If you score a failure, your words are spoken, but your god, for whatever reason, refuses to listen. If you fumble the prey test, you've offended yeah. the god. You must roll on the wrath of the gods roll. Well, That's a success, though. That's Outstanding. Six All right. rounds, nice. Yep. So, so he just uh, he intones uh, uh, god of the sea and storms. Uh, grant the uh, ally of mine uh, strength to weather this <laughs> coming battle. Nice. <laughs> nice. It's almost that you hear the crash of waves hit you and you feel invigorated, uh, Thognoth. Hmm. Frederick. Right, so Frederick's in a little bit of a quandary. He, he, as soon as it kicked off, he just lobbed something in the general direction, and I, I imagine that was largely ineffective. Well, no, he but hasn't done that yet, because that's a, that's where, while we were rolling initiative four, see, everyone's kind of springing into action. You're a little slower. You could do that now if you like. Well, that's, that's pointless, so just retcon that out. Okay. I'll, I'll, um, seeing that... See, it looks it looks to me is that Fognoff has pretty much got the situation under control he seems to have gone in there pretty hard he hasn't um, pinned him yet like he's grappling with him they're both up and kind of you know bar brawl kind of thing knocking over tables knocking over chairs no one's uh Thognoth has his his hands on him but he hasn't got him pinned or under control yet because i know uh yes i, he did, I, I, I think well, I imagine that I know these dwarves are a bit touchy about you interfering when they're, you know, they're they're, they're fight, they they get all honourable and stuff. Um, so, is the, can I see if the guy's got an obvious weapon on him? Or 
Yeah. Well, you can do. Why don't you give us a uh, perception check? Okay. But what difficulty would you? Uh, if you're taking your full action, we'll make it average. Okay. You want to oh. fortune point that? Yeah. 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 I don't you spend any yet today? Nice. Oh, nice. impressive success as well. So here's what you see. You're looking at this guy and trying to see, and there's uh, uh, Thognoth and him are struggling, and Thognoth has got all this fucking armor on him, you know, and the guy's got furs, and he's, he's struggling against this guy. Probably doesn't have furs on in the summertime, um, but he's struggling against him. What you can see is just like, this guy looks like his, like every vein in his body, the guy that uh, Thognoth is wrestling with, every vein seems like it's ready to fucking explode. They are raised so hard on, high on the surface of his skin. And the thing that you can uh, notice is that as he struggles and gets, you know, brings his hands up as if he's going to try and hit or try and break free of, of Thognoth, you get a chance to see his eyes. Mm -hmm. His eyes... There are two things you notice about them. For one, the iris is a vibrant, almost like the heart of a dancing flame, bright yellow. And the entire rest of his eye looks to be a blackened, like reddish color as if every vein in his eyes all burst at the same time in each of them leaving him with almost blackened eyes so all you can see is just the very rim where some little bit of white comes through where those vessels have not busted and then the yellow iris and then the black pupil in the center he looks right. inhuman as soon as I say that I like I pointed, look at his eyes. He's possessed, he's inhuman, he's sorcery, there's something wrong with him. He, he, look at his eyes. And Have that is the like perfect way to end our first session. <laughs> so, uh, nice. Alwyn and the Norskin will go at the start of our next session, but that seems like a perfect place to end. So then for those of, oh, first off guys, I think what is, is 150 the, the bog standard uh, award for XP? Um, I'd have, have to check it. I forget. So I'll double check. I'll, I'll, I'll post in Discord yeah, yeah. what your XP is for the session. But uh, for cool. those listening at home, I'm going to replace, now that we've updated our tokens with all this extra great stuff on here, I will put those ones on here. There we go. And we'll get Astrid's stats up in the game too. For those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for session one of Salt, Silver, and Sin. Uh, we will be back in two weeks' time uh, with uh, the uh, continuation of our campaign. Uh, but in the interim, as is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, the campaign, or the game we're playing, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section of the video, and I'll endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. Uh, there's also a link down below to the Dungeon Musings Discord server. We have a channel there dedicated to uh, all the Warhammer games we run on the channel, as well as uh, a channels dedicated to most other campaigns we run on the channel as well as most other uh, games we run on the channel as and a ton of other great you know places for folks to hang out and chat including GM discussions in general or non-RPG stuff or video games a uh, lot of chat about uh, Baldur's Gate 3 over the last few weeks but I see with the tide is beginning to turn and talk about uh, Starfield so I'm looking forward to that when <laughs> that comes out next week um, there is also a uh, link down below to our friends at Noble Knight Games Noble Knight Games is the preeminent unionized retailer of hard to find and out of print RPGs in North America uh, not only do they have a terrific selection of new role playing games board games and card games they have an unmatched selection of hard to find and out of print RPGs I filled my uh, Warhammer 2nd edition camp, uh, collection uh, thanks to them uh, um, 
if they uh, don't have something in stock that you're looking for, you can often put it on a want list and they will send you an email when it comes in. And if you make a purchase of $10 or more through the uh, website, be sure to enter the code SUMMERMUSER, all caps, all one word, and you'll save yourself 10% on your purchase. Uh, if you're listening to this after around September 15th, 2023, come back to one of our more recent videos and they'll have an updated discount code on that one because it changes every uh, few months or so. Um, there's also a link down below to something called Heroes Save Villages. That's the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel. It benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, a really amazing organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children, including ongoing relief efforts in Ukraine and the surrounding countries at the time of recording. All donations through that link go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. None of it comes to the channel or any other middleman. It just goes to benefit the kids who uh, benefit from the services. And if you donated $10 or more since June 1st, 2023, be sure to come on back to the uh, Charity Initiatives channel on the Dungeon Musings Discord server and cast your vote for the next part of our year-long charity campaign, the Year of Ill Omens. Two more parts left of that campaign. We'll be starting uh, voting on the next uh, leg of it today, which will be selection of, not today, tomorrow, um, which will be the selection of what game we're going to play and what kind of heroes we're going to play. It is looking like we're playing a Viking session with that. So I look forward to hearing what options people will be voting for. We also have this afternoon a charity session in support of our friend uh, J.M. Defoge. Uh, J.M. is the author of the outstanding Jackal's Bronze Age Fantasy RPG, and he has recently had some very serious uh, health complications. There was a GoFundMe that his uh, family has set up to help him because it's going to be months of him not being able to work while he's recovering mm -hmm. from this. So uh, we have a, a, a link on the D Charity Initiatives channel, and we'll be playing a session of his game, Jackal's, later this afternoon in support of JM. Uh, we wish him, if you are in a position where you can assist his family, uh, you can find a link to, to do so. Um, if not, uh, we hope that that you enjoy the Jackals uh, session we'll have later this afternoon. And uh, if you, you can find the, the game through Osprey Games and on drive through RPG and buying the game also uh, helps uh, JM, albeit just a little bit more indirectly. The last thing I will say today is an enormous thank you to our stalwart Grim and Perilous Heroes. So, Sean, Carl, Colin, John, and Darren, thank you so much for joining me today, guys. I've been looking forward to the kicking off this campaign uh, for... I mean, God, since we made the decision to kick something off like this, and it was even more fun than expected. So thank you so much for playing today, guys. Mm -hmm. For those listening at home, we'll be back in the old world in two weeks' time to find out what those glowing eyes might mean and whether it's infectious. We'll leave uh, Thognoth to consider that for the next uh, two weeks. Mm. Uh, but until then, we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off the troubles of our world and think about the, our tr uh, the troubles our heroes in Salzenmund are uncovering. And until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming. <laughs>